since we started that, they take the money and put it back into drivers and their families, people who get disabilities and are out of work and um, help kind of put a little bit of extra money in their pocket. So a percentage of the proceeds from all the paintings um, go directly to Avery Goodman after this week. Guys, such a cool, cool thing up here on the stage in the staging area. And I want to tell you, you see Connor Day up here. The question is, who is going to be on the blank canvas starting tomorrow morning? You know, I was taking a look at those earlier, Earl. There's uh, Some of those paintings are still in the affordable for everybody range at this point in time. Some of them have uh, scaled up to some pretty good dollar value. But, you know, if you're here in the facility and wanted to come away with a really cool piece of art to take home with you, you know, and you're driving in from, uh, check it out because the bidding is still not too extravagant on a couple of them. Now, they'll get, they'll get there before the end of the week. But yeah. at the same time, what a cool piece of art for your home. I mean, they are phenomenal. He does an awesome job as a newbie here last year to see them. Uh, and, and, again, like they are, it is a blank canvas right now. And, Indeed. Right. And by the time we show up the next day, he's pretty much got a bulk of it done. He's adding some details by the time that, that we show up and – kind of get rolling here, you know, the next day. But he does a phenomenal job with such great detail. Well, it's a blank canvas today because the story of today is yet to be told. We don't know what direction this whole thing is going. There are so many stories to follow. We will have more coming up next in our live coverage from the 38th Annual Chili Bowl Nationals on Flow Racing. <laughs>
Live look at the AP1 Insurance Pit Cam down the center of the very busy road today. Caleb Hart, Chris Moore. Chris, pretty incredible as we were up there making our pit walk today. How much more busy it got towards the front and middle of that lane today. And uh, we, we've hinted at it, talked about it a little bit, but uh, certainly star power in the building today. And it has uh, picked up the buzz in the arena for sure because Kyle Larson is here. And it was interesting watching all of the cameras all of the views on Kyle up in front in that Keith Coons Motorsports stable and seeing how much attention he just drew to the front row of this expo. Yeah, everybody just trying to get an eye, you know, get a piece of him. Uh, because, again, up until Tuesday afternoon, right, Tuesday went about when we started the program, uh, nobody anticipated, expected, thought that it was going to happen, that we would get Kyle Larson here at the Chili Bowl. But he being the... 100% race car driver that he is. Kind of mapped out the logistics, felt like it was possible, and Keith Coons had a race car available for him. And so he's here tonight in the building. Votto's off tonight, so I'm sure all of them will be locked in, tuned in, and ready to watch, uh, see what he does. Yeah, if you guys are out there uh, in Votto and um, tune in the broadcast, welcome in. This is the Chili Bowl Nationals, our 38th annual running thereof, should be a fun night for you. And again, the story we're going to watch with Kyle is he's got to finish in the top two tonight in the A main event. If he does that, we're making the effort to get him back here on Saturday. Yeah. If not, it's all moot. But let's check it up top. Earl Hoon interview with the K1 Race Gear interview. In fact, yeah, guys, my first driver I'm going to speak to here this evening is going to be local owned Tokla, yeah, to Tokla, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Sean McClellan, and uh, Sean. Describe your emotions right now. I mean, I know we're just kind of all staging up here, waiting for things to get underway. So do you have butterflies right now, or are you just kind of sitting pretty here in your happy place? No, I'm pretty relaxed right now. I'm kind of anxious because we've been sitting here for quite a while, but uh, just waiting to go out. Uh, going to be in the first group here, so track's going to be probably a little juiced up and slimy. So see if we can't go out there and make a few good laps and uh, give Rusty a a good dial on what's going on with the car and move forward from there. You got a pretty good starting spot uh, here in your heat race for being, you know, heat race number one outside row number two. I mean, you know, you got to pass cars. Passing points is the name of the game. So how aggressive do you have to be in this first heat race when you know the track is still going to be juiced up when you get out there? I think you got to be aggressive every time you hit the track here just because passing points are the name of the game. So uh, going to be on the gas, going to be aggressive and uh, Hopefully it turns out good for us. Sean McClellan, guys, ready to rip around the Tulsa Expo Raceway. All right. Thank you, Earl. Sean's actually got a really good draw here off of this one. He is outside row number two in heat race number one, right in behind Brad Mosen, a good car in and of himself running out of the Bondio stable. So, Sean, one of those guys getting a little bit of love in the dirt draft that's going on is that uh, Folks are starting to lock in their picks, get uh, noted around things. Off to a little slower start here tonight. As it was weird during the uh, pre-race show, right as we were talking, I saw the Lele Rotero working around and chopping up the top of the racetrack. And we had heard lots and lots of moisture in it already. I Track crew, I don't know if they made a late change to what they were thinking to do, but it was strange seeing the Lele out that late in the process. And right now, still a lot of the heavy equipment rolling around the facility as well. So... We don't have hot laps down the ramp or on the track yet, but we'll get them here in just a little bit. It'll be the dirt draft hot laps, and if you guys aren't dirt drafting, well, you need to, mm -hmm. as we have been discussing our uh, discussing our picks here internally. Now, I'm not playing. Somebody's got to stay neutral observer on this guy. <laughs> but after yesterday, I have proven that it is good luck to make your picks in the booth because <laughs> Wilner goes down and more goes up. Look at that, Chris. I'm trying to catch him. I did not. Did not get off to a good start, but I made a big move on Tuesday. More slight improvements. I'm within 40 points of, of Wilner. Okay. So I have a shot. I have a shot. Now, here's the good news. We've all at least got the flow standings up to within the top 1,000. Andy Richardson, you're picking it up. <laughs> that works made for me. Made a move yesterday. Nate, that's a pretty big fall, bud. You're going to have to, uh, you might have to do better. Kane. Defending champ Tyler McKim really yeah. having a bad week. Also, shout out to Pacific Northwest native Kyler Hope. I called him out yesterday for really sucking at this, and he did better. Yes. Way to made, do better. Made now, the second biggest jump. 
Bill 3915 is the leader. Apparently, Bill 31 uh, through 3914 were all taken, so that's what he's after. But we're all chasing him. You can chase him, too, by subscribing, logging on to Dirt Draft. You get all kinds of free stuff. New subscribers get a free T-shirt and bragging rights over your friends and all of us flow guys as well, except for me, because I'm only <laughs> kind of half playing and encouraging on. So go to Dirt Draft, subscribe, free T-shirt, and see if you can beat the boys here on the Flow Racing Crew. Let's roll up top. K1 Race Gear interview with Connor Wade. Spencer Baston comes in tonight with an average prelim finish of 7.5 in his career. That's pretty good, but his week didn't get off to the greatest start. Spencer upside down in practice of all things on Sunday. How do you avoid a costly mistake like that in racing action? Uh, I think that's just a little bit of just getting your feet wet, I guess. I. That was kind of a combination of maybe sending it a little too far um, and, and having to lift. It was just kind of a circumstantial situation, but it didn't affect our our uh, car at all, really, or our mood. So we went out for race of champions and uh, established a little bit more on our notebook. And I think we've we've got a, a good piece going into tonight. The Sage Fruit 1S should be fast, and uh, we drew a, a, a heat that we want to be in and, and certain deep. So a lot of opportunity for passing points. So we'll just have to keep our nose clean and. Uh, keep moving along. When you were out in the race of champions, did you feel any negative side effects from the wreck on Sunday or was your career able to uh, get back every, get everything back together properly? No, it was fine. Yeah, nothing wrong. Good deal. Spencer Basin starts at the tail of his heat race tonight, not upside down on practice night, but not going to let that have an effect on his run for a golden driller. All right, Connor, taking a look at Spencer. He is uh, inside back row heat race number three. Opportunity for him to pick off a lot of cars, score a lot of points here. We're on a points format, by the way. Uh, I have popped that onto my own personal Twitter at CalebHard83 that you guys can take a look at and see how we're scoring this whole deal. But the name of the game in Heat Race is to score enough points to make it to the qualifier. Once you make it to the qualifier, we have seen over the course of these few nights that just about anything can happen. Win the qualifier, you're assuredly in and in with a decent starting spot. Uh, qualifier inverts by 24, so if you're in the top 24 points, you're in really good shape. Also, another great resource for a lot of this uh, information, stats, etc., and points is the Twitter account that you just pulled up on your phone, Wikipedia. Yeah, so Wikipedia has posted. He posts all kinds of stuff, and again, and as Clinton mentions, you guys mention all the time, uh, everything you see from Wikipedia is not official. You can fairly count on it but it's not a hundred percent official but just for an idea of what drivers are looking for the average qualifier cutoff for thursday nights is 74.2 the average inversion number is 93 points 179 points to lock into the a main again that includes your qualifier points and then 226 lands you on the front row that's on average on tuesday nights or excuse me thursday nights here at the chili bowl it's a loaded field here this afternoon. Speaking of loaded fields and loaded events, you should see everything that's coming up here on Flow Racing over the next month or so between the late model dirt series for Lucas Oil, short track super series, your big butt bonafide boys in the Love Northeast. It. The drags are on the Pro Superstar Shootout, USAC Winter Games, High Limit Sprint Cars, and the Lucas Oil and High Limit at the Golden Isles. You know what they say, Chris, right? Flow Racing, come for the race. Stay for the rush. I was hoping that you weren't like counting on me to do that. I was hoping you'd just tee it up. <laughs> up top we go. Earl, who are you talking to? Thank you, Caleb. I'm going to have tonight's pole sitter for heat race number one, Tim McKinnon. Tim, we're still waiting on here to roll down track side. And uh, like I said, you're no stranger of getting heat races, heat race wins here. Last time you won a heat race was in 2015. You got a pretty good starting spot here on the pole. What's it gonna take to get the job done? Just uh, hope that uh, the racetrack kind of widens out a little bit so we can get some racing done. If not, uh, just hang out and hopefully just hang on to the spot that we got. Guys, we are starting to roll. Tim Ken, if you notice on the right side of his car, he's pretty much maybe one or 
two cars that have the headers coming out on the right side. I talked to the crew as to why do they have that? They said, well, just because we can, right? And it sounds pretty cool because it, you can really differentiate itself from the other cars when you have the headers coming out the right side. Remember, that is Tim Kent. He's starting on the pole in heat race number one. But we got cars rolling down the ramp as we are about to kick off warm-ups here tonight for the Thursday night qualifying here at the Chili Bowl. Well, good news, cars down the ramp for Dirt Draft Hot Laps here at the 38th Annual Chili Bowl Nationals on Flow Racing. Our NOS Energy Drink Ramp Cam. Drivers fueled up by NOS, heading on down and getting ready to stage around the uh, Expo Raceway here before they rip off some hot laps. We are fueled by NOS all weekend long. I even went and found me some zero sugar NOS Energy Drink, and it is uh, propelling us here through the weekend. You got a couple of them over there. I got loaded <laughs> up, man. There's a uh, NOS Energy Drink station right by the main entrance up here to the Expo yes. Raceway. So if you're still coming in, where they are passing out some free samples and showing you all the great uh, flavors that are available for those of us who are, oh, I don't know, insulin completely deficient like myself, zero sugar, uh, brand new and relaunched. And that's an awesome deal. We're excited to have it. As you take a look out and around the racetrack, the cars from Heat Races number one, and two will be on the racetrack for this first hot lap session. And that is Joe Boyles, Clinton's dad, with the old school throwback gold flake lettering on the Boyles car. Always a familiar number 98 with the Boyles and the Rod and Supply sponsorship on it. So Joe going to be out in heat race number one. Joe's had some fun. He's a heat race winner here as recently as a few years ago here at the Chili Bowl Nationals. Always notable, too. One of the biggest tail tanks in the building every year does Joe Boyles have, and so hopefully, maybe that's why Clinton's running a little behind, uh, hey, but now dad, and we, I don't blame him one we bit. We give him that freedom to do so. Absolutely. Joe is going off inside row number three in heat race number two. Take a look at the 22 car. We interviewed him up the top of the ramp. That is Soup, Sean McClellan, with the nicest piece that he has had here in this building in a number of years. Outside row to first heat race, McClellan. The local from Tulsa, Oklahoma, has been an A-Main starter here at the Chili Bowl Nationals before. Really good chance to pick up some points early on in the evening today. Eddie Tafoya Jr., the 73C, he will go outside of the front row in heat number two, the Chino Hills, California native. 
Tafoya comes out of the Josh Ford Motorsports Camp that comes out of California. They win a lot of races top to bottom in a lot of different places. Between non-wing sprint cars, midgets, they do a lot of wing sprint car racing themselves as they fire off and roll around. Good equipment that they have there at JFM. Got a chance to catch up with Jimmy May a little bit earlier. We're talking about West Coast Swing for the uh, his Wing 410 program. Oh, really? Might. Might see him in the fastest five days of motorsports with NARC, which we'll see here on Flow Racing, and possibly the Jim Raper Memorial Dirt Cup at Skagit Speedway. What don't you see on Flow Racing is a good question. That it pretty much it, right? <laughs> Out of Great Britain, Benbury, Oxford is the home for the 97K. Tommy Harris running under the Keith Coons Motorsports Camp. Tom has been a, a hard charger in this building before. Very few people race harder than what Tom does. Expect 97 to not only be fast, but spectacular. Racing hard in a KKM car is usually a good combination. There's another guy we talked to, Tim Kent, the Bristow, Oklahoma native. Running the David Stevenson Express. Memorial car for David, who passed away a little while ago. With the very cool Rat Fink on the side of it. You know Rat Fink, right? No. You missed that one. Yeah. Connor got in some trouble on uh, practice day for not knowing Rat Fink either. Rat Fink's cool. I'm used to being in trouble, so. All right, cool. <laughs> Be right there. Connor, you have a friend in me. 71G, Taylor Ferns, Shelby Township, Michigan for this 71G car. Stepping in to that team that used to field cars for the Demon, Damian Gardner who retired at last year's Chili yeah. Bowl and has not been in a race car since. Good for him, sticking to his guns, I guess. Say it's not going to be like a Brett Favre salary. Right, right? well, you never know. Mm. In the 24S, out and on the racetrack, outside row number four, Rodney Westhafer from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. One of the posse coming down to contest this one. Pennsylvania showed up last night with a podium run for Briggs Danner. Sure did. Outside row number one out of Auckland, New Zealand. That's Brad Mosin in the Bondio 47. Team car to Zach Dom on the weekend. Mosin has some speed. We'll see if he can make that outside row one starting spot pay off for him for 105 points. There's the third portion of the U team on the fence, Kyle Spence. Inside row one. Heat race number two from Bridgeton, New Jersey. I think he's a sleeper tonight. Of all the stars here tonight, the U team has been top ten both both, both uh, nights they've run. Top five. Yeah. Right? Yeah, Chase McDermott, McDermott was and third. Michael Facinto. Yeah. So and Kyle Spence is not afraid to wheel a race car. I think he's got a good shot to be one of the guys you're looking at up front with all the stars. Third member of the Morton team, Cade Morton, outside row number three from Coweta, Oklahoma. Morton with Chance Morton and Darren Nida over the weekend, the three cars that have run out of that stable. Cars starting to pick up the pace yep, here. Lights are out. See if live time and scoring's hooked up and we're ready to go. That's Chase Johnson. Running one of the Dave.com cars. Chase, typically very good in this arena, one of California's best. Former Midget winner in his own right. Get a look at Joe Boyle who's making some laps. Some big smoke showing out of Joe's car. I remember talking to Clinton earlier this week and he said that they were tinkering with some stuff under the hood of Joe Boyle's race car. And I don't know if they had a problem and haven't figured it out yet or what the case might be, but Joe quickly ducks into the infield. That's Whit Gastineau up and around the racetrack looking for some room to run. As you get a look at Mosin working at the inside of Ferns. Track's no. definitely got some juice to it tonight to start out. No live timing and scoring yet. As you get a look at Morton and Harris in the 97K. Car number three on the racetrack. Score him out of Bozeman, Montana. That's Cole Schroeder. And that'll do it. 
No live timing and scoring yet. Problem with transponder loop. They'll try to get that thing up and working before too long here. Really quick, the Twitter update from Brad Chandler. Chili Bowl Gravel on Twitter. Says we have come to the point in the week where the CB Nationals Expo Raceway is full of water. With the exception of the very top near the wall, the surface should be similar to last night. We will continue to work in the top in both corners as we can. Other than the top, expect the surface to evolve just like last night. We will be tight and full of grip to start. There will be grip through any line you choose, and we should have a technical cushion by the end of the show. All right. So that's... They liked what they had last night and are aiming for it again. We all liked what they had last night. That yes. was a whole lot of fun. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back with hot lap session number two. Dirt Draft hot laps on the air here at our live coverage of the 38th annual Chili Bowl Nationals on Flow Racing presented by NOS Energy Drink. Next group of cars is on the track here for the Dirt Draft Hot Laps at Chili Bowl Nationals Thursday Night Edition. Victory Fuel qualifying night here in the arena as you take a look at car number 51. Score them as the 51X. That's Joe Walker from Harrisonville, Missouri. Walker first car will get a look at pole position of heat race number three for him as cars from heat races number three and number four have made their way onto the racetrack. One less car tonight than last night, but eight heat races instead of nine. That should be the 22C of Corey Brink on racetrack. Brink from Sturgis, South Dakota, outside row number three. Big midget racing hotbed, Sturgis, South Dakota. You've heard that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they love their Harleys and they love their open midgets. It's kind of a weird deal. <laughs> Brink, each their own, right? Yeah, Each exactly. area has their own so, interests and... Brink in the 22, that's a uh, cell phone car. It's a Ripper chassis with a Mopar in it. We've actually seen Mopars do a little bit of work. 19-year-old Mopar engine winning yep. the A feature last night underneath yep. Corey Day's car as part of that great run. Well, we know a lot about this guy. Welcome back to the building, Kyle Larson. He's driving the 98K tonight. Kind of strange seeing him under that number. Larson goes inside. Row number three, and again, if he can finish in the top two of tonight's A main event, he's going to try to do the double going out to the Wild West Shootout in Votto on Saturday, running their feature, and then hopping a flight, and I mean, I'm guessing full police escort and everything back yeah. into the building on Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening to try to get here for Tulsa to compete in the A main. How many guys do you think would attempt this knowing that they have to finish top two tonight to even have a chance to do it? I mean, that is a lofty goal to set. I think if you had the resources, you'd see right. some people giving it, giving it a shot. Now, yeah. with Kyle's case, uh, part of what's going to play into the factor here, um, going back to Votto and running it on Saturday, is he's likely to miss the pole shuffle. So and if he finishes second and locks in, in missing the pole shuffle, he's going to start 10th. Uh, if he wins his prelim night, depending on what pill is drawn for him amongst one through five, right. he could be as far back as eighth. Right, but as far up as fourth. Or as correct. far up as fourth. Now, we know missing the pole shuffle, he won't be able to get the pole. Right. We're assuming he'll miss the pole shuffle. Right. But, yeah, it's uh, even if I he wins, the work's not going to be done for Kyle Larson because there'll still be some road to hoe. Has this happened before, though? Like, do we know that that's how it would be handled, or would they automatically just give him... 
10th regardless. Mm, I don't we're know. We're taking it under assumption. Right, right. Uh, I think it's a safe assumption, though. Most organizations will hold the spot, if, right. that, if that makes any sense, right? Especially knowing that you, you're you not missing right. the entire event. You are planning on making it. Correct. So, All right. Live timing and scoring has uh, kicked its way up, and that means the guy on the screen, you're going to be able to see some lap times out of your boy, Timmy B. I think Timmy B's got a great shot tonight. Matt Seymour Racing has really picked up their game in uh, in recent weeks. We saw how technical the cushion got last night. If it happens again, which we know they're going for, Timmy B's going to roll the bottom as he always does and is going to be strong. I think, again, if you're talking about that dirt draft deal, if you're setting your dirt draft lineups, he's in a tough heat race. We'll talk, heat four is absolutely stacked, but I think Timmy B's got a great shot to be right up there with your Thorson and Larson. We're going to backfill some information, too, because they did get live timing and scoring. They just hadn't made the loop available to everybody, so we'll see where everybody did in uh, hot lap session number one here in a couple of seconds. That's Shaley Bade in car number 03, a wing 305 driver from out in Nebraska. Bade is in the unenviable position of starting inside row number two in heat four, right behind C.J. Leary and right in front of Kyle Larson. I want no part of heat race four. There's another the guy who's going to be in it. Casey Schumann, former Outlaw Late Model director, now promoter at I-70, and heck of an on-wing driver himself. Schumann running for Dunlap Performance here this weekend. Beautiful red, white, and blue. Parts Authority number 32 car, and again, part of that loaded heat race four. Yeah, he's going to uh, he's gonna make some noise. He's going to have his work cut out for him. But, as you said, talented race car driver in his own right. There is another guy we talked to, Spencer Baston. And as you mentioned, he will start last, ninth of nine in heat number three. Flying Sage Fruit sponsorship from the state of Washington. Shout out to everybody at home watching along back in the home state. Green flag is out here in hot lap session number two. Christopher Townsend, probably the most unenviable position tonight. He starts last in heat number four, the Cleveland, Texas native. Look out, Casey Brink, he's got a handful up ahead of him. That is the 08M of Dylan Mentz from Chapuma, Queensland, Australia. Look at Kyle going in through one and two. Just like riding a bike. Really fast, really I, powerful, really twitchy bike. Yeah, I had no doubt though that it would take him the slightest bit of time. So let's take a look, combined with the laps from before, and it's uh, Ethan Mitchell, little Bundy from outside row number four in the 19M with the fastest lap by two tenths of a second right now here in Dirt Draft Hot Laps. You remember the show he put on last year? He was running up front, hopped to right rear, got stuck in the fence. They pulled it off the fence on his prelim night. It was okay. He drove from the back. Don't remember exactly where he finished, but he had a solid run. It was something. And was into the night program. Right ahead of him, sneaking around to C.J. Leary in the 55. Right now, it's Mitchell, Buckwalter, Leary, Larson, and Basin. Your top five with Mosin Schumann. Caden Sorali, who uh, West Coast micro ace this last year, has a chilly bowl ride. Dalton Camfield and Christopher Townsend in your top ten. And I, as you can tell, they've not rolled these cars off yet, so they are not done. As you see, a left rear flat. Joe Perry's 28J. Yeah. But this group is not done, I don't believe. There's CJ Leary. Alex Bowman racing cars, looking for a better weekend, and they're off to a really good start. Kevin Thomas Jr. had a decent run in the prelim A main. Jake Swanson locked her in last night. We're back to green. I do think we can safely say that the Alex Bowman racing crew is already off to a better start this year. We're already having a better week this year than last year. All the problems they had one year ago. And just as we say it, Leary jumps up to second. 11.055, and we've got one in the 10 second bracket, Caleb. 10.858, and it is Ethan Mitchell. Well, Bundy making some power. Casey Schumann, who's up to fourth, 11.085. Kyle Larson has also joined Mitchell in the 10 second bracket, 10.920. They are the only two in the 10 second bracket. 
everybody else still working as you see one get crossed up on your screen. I believe that was the 10 C of Dalton Camfield. And so that will conclude this round of hot laps heat races three and four. And Ethan Mitchell remains at the top of dirt draft hot laps a 10 point eight five eight. Kyle Larson, 10, 9, 2, 0. CJ Leary, Casey Schumann, and Timmy Buckwalter, the five quickest thus far in Dirt Draft Hot Laps. And I think what you see there from Ethan Mitchell is this is not just a top heavy event. There are some really fast race cars beyond just your Kyle Larson, Tanner Thorson, Spencer Baston trio. Bobby Moore putting some touches on last night's Corey Day winner. We will take a timeout. Hot lap session number three is due out next here at the 38th annual Chili Bowl Nationals live on Flow Racing brought to you by NOS Energy Drink. We are live here at the Expo Raceway for hot lap session number three of your Dirt Draft hot laps. Ryan Bernal, the first car on your screen and had about two and a half seconds to talk with Ryan up top. Was actually in conversation with Shane Golubek out for the uh, Matt Wood Racing Team when Ryan came up and said, we drew dead last in our heat race. And the first question from both of us was, well, which heat race did you draw dead last <laughs> in? Because it does matter. Right, absolutely. And he goes, heat race number five. Both of us go, all right, is there anybody else in it? He says, well, there's a couple of names, but by and large, I'm pretty happy with that. And you yeah. take a look at it. So uh, Bernal dead last in heat five, but compared to some of the other heat races, there might be some low hanging fruit for him to get by in that one. Yeah, he's got a good opportunity. And as we've seen, the Matwood Racing guys have been 100% on their game thus far this week. A lock-in for Shane Golubic, a top five last night for Colby Copeland. Landon so, Rooks looked yes. really good. So the, uh, the Matt Wood Racing guys have been solid. Speaking of a guy, well, we haven't really seen him too much. He had an opportunity on Monday night, and they grenaded in qualifying for the race of champions. And then we're just kind of out there figuring things out come feature time. But RTJ, 40-time feature winner in 2023 between all the different things that he drove. Bad dude, man. Yep, bad, out here. Bad dude. Out here running for Andy Ryan Bald and... Uh, Good equipment. Again, already done a motor swap here on the week, so you hope that the mechanical gremlins are all over for Ricky. He is going off inside row number three in heat race number six. Solid opportunity for him, but some good cars. The row in front of him, Jeffrey Newell and Jesse Love, are in row number two in his heat race. So RTJ going to have a little bit of work to do, but I'm sure for his sake, he's just hoping to not blow up another motor in this building. One of a bunch of 22 cars here in the field. The 22S is A.J. Johnson out of Oskaloosa, Iowa. A.J. representing the home of the Knoxville Nationals. Pulling up my sheet here. And, of course, my small motor skills decided not to work. <laughs> uh, Johnson in the 22 Fires off and uh, joins the field. Johnson running for the GR Motorsports group of cars. That's a spike with an SR11 in it. Gavin Bochelle, the Mooresville, North Carolina native. Bochelle will roll off from the third starting spot. A 
Golden Driller winner in last year's Tulsa shootout. Tonight, CB Industries entry. Jesse Love in the 84 car yet to light the pilot spark. A popular pick if you're looking outside of Larson Thorson. Jesse Love's a guy that a lot of people like. And as we saw last night, if we get a track similar to last night, the California boys take that to their liking. Yeah, big curbs are right their style. They're used to that kind of stuff. Guy with uh, one of the most impressive performances in Chili Bowl history, but no driller. The unique looking 15 of J.J. Yaley. Kind of looks like a dinosaur. Phoenix, Arizona listed hometown. Definitely some strange paneling on the 15 <laughs> car, but uh, we talked about it a little bit early in the week. Um, they use a little bit of that for side bite. Right, yeah, within definitely the an arrow. The thing that throws me on that car is the two different angle of down tubes, where yeah. your right one is a very traditional straight down. Your left one has got that big, almost 90 degree downturn on the end of it. But uh, Yaley has always liked doing different stuff. His dad, Cactus Jack Yaley, the uh, guy who really brought the fifth bar into popularity. He called it an anti-roll bar. But fifth bar technology has been popular in non-wing stuff for years. Yaley here tonight. Running for Petty Performance Racing. It's a ripper with a Stanton SR11 in it. Cody Beard, the front row of heat race number six out of St. Anthony, Indiana. Beard in the 7B machine. The Firing out and onto the racetrack, our 17J. Ryan Bickett, Ramona, South Dakota, outside row number two as they're looking at the right rear on that race car still. And welcoming into Broadcast Central, Clinton Boyles. Hi, guys. Afternoon. How are we doing? We're all right. Dad's car okay? Uh, he's, <laughs> he's not really sure what's wrong with it. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, he, the him and Esslinger had spent some time on it earlier this week, changing some stuff, messing with some stuff, and went out there and it wasn't quite running right. So not totally sure exactly what it might be. Um, but I think he decided that he doesn't want to just go out for that heat race, not knowing if it's going to run and just create issues for people around him or tear anyone's stuff up. So I'm guessing he's going to be a scratch for the night. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, tough luck for I, him. I guess when you only run yeah, once a year or something like that, it's bound to happen. He's but He's done enough of this at this point in time <laughs> yeah. that he knows when he can go out and compete and yeah. knows when, okay, this may not be the best of ideas. Yep. A lot of him coming down here, I think, is to, you know, support me, be able to hang out. Um, you know, he just enjoys getting help me, which is huge for me. It's so cool to get to hang out with him and have him, you know, in my corner helping out and um, everything we get to do together. So, yeah, I, I do hate it that he doesn't get to race. Um, I, I told him, I said, you got to get that thing out more, you know, run it, run it a little more often. And he's like, yeah, I know, I, I, I should. So we'll, we'll see. Who knows? Well, good on him for recognizing the problems and not wanting to go out there and yeah. screw up another guy's name. Well, and there's, he's not the only one that, that uh, you know, should have that mentality. <laughs> I'm glad he, yep. he kind of does because yeah. it can create chaos for everyone. It just costs everyone money and, and time. 100%. Brian Harvey from Blanchard, Oklahoma, the guy on your screen right now. Green flag is out here. Conditions for our third of four dirt draft hot lap sessions. Oh, look out, middle of the corner. All kinds of squirrely was Kenny Johnson. Everybody drives away, keeps her back together. Uh, so far, no big problems, but some drivers, a little too tight, not quite right. Hopefully they don't make a mess for the rest of the field. Big smoke showing. I think that was the 20 down. H of Noah Harris. Yeah. He's off into the infield. Jesse Love making up good time, and this is where he gets scary in practice. We got one car with a broke. He's broke. The 09 is. Bernal managed to skate by without it, yeah. but it was hairy there for a second. <laughs> so Mitchell's still on top. Larson, Love, RTJ, and Leary, one through five. Top 10, Timmy B, Casey Schumann, Spencer Based, and Ryan Bernal, Gavin Bichelle with one group of cars left to come. 
it's an exciting night here in the arena, Clinton. Uh, yeah, a lot of it, buzz. It feels like things changed a little bit, didn't yep. it? it? It certainly has, and um, you can tell the the people are here. Um, there's, I feel like I feel like we're already at max capacity for the expo, and I know I know more people are just filing in right now. The parking lot when I got here this afternoon was jam packed full, and um, yeah, you just tell things have, have ramped up a little bit. It's a great day outside. It is. I don't know if we touched on that. It's we 60 did. degrees outside. Yeah, the BR Motorsports weather report, yeah. 60 degrees and not a cloud in the sky. No, it was a beautiful day for some golf today. And Had now, to play? Uh, I shot terrible, but, <laughs> but we got to play super cool. We got to play Southern Hills here in Tulsa, which is a highly exclusive golf course. Um, absolutely phenomenal. The most probably prestigious and beautiful golf course I've ever got to play on, and I've played some cool places. So. Um, yeah, unreal experience as far as that goes, but it was extremely difficult also. So we're going to take a time out. We have the final Dirt Draft Hot Lap session coming up next as you're tuned to live coverage of the 38th Annual Chili Bowl Nationals on Flow Racing brought to you by NOS Energy Drink. And welcome back to live coverage here on Flow Racing, a victory fuel qualifying night here at the Chili Bowl Nationals. We're here in the pit area, and guys, the boys just touched on it before we went into break, that this place is jammed, packed with people, right? And sometimes here in the pit area and the staging area, it becomes quite a headache, right? To where you don't have a lot of space to move. But here's something I've been keeping my eye on all week long right i'm up high above mark daly racing on top of his trailer right and this is kind of cool so all you have to do to avoid the crowd just get on top of the trailer you can go and you got a great shot of the big screen right in front of it oh by the way guys they got a nice blow up um comforter up here a couple long chairs i might sip on a couple cocktails and enjoy the final hot lab session coming up in a couple moments i know a friend was taking a nap up on top of one of those uh air mattresses on top of the trailers today I'm still trying to f find out who brought Earl down here. <laughs> just, well, I'm assuming, just complete yeah. buffoonery. I, I'm assuming that it was an airline of some kind that he handed money to, but at the same time. Earl, if you want more on airtime, I'll trade you spots up there, and I'll make sure the cocktails are full and flowing. Nice. <laughs> Final Dirt Draft Hot Laps here of the evening, and there is your Chili Bowl champion from two years ago, Tanner Thorson. Car number 88, Thorson. Scheduled to go outside row number one in his heat race. It's an excellent spot for him. Just going to need to get a good start and up and around. And Thorson yeah. should quickly pocket 105 points. However, they're not just going to give it to him. He's going to have to earn it. But Thorson set up well early here in the night. He's not buried in uh, that heat race. It's got some guys that you'll recognize, but it's also not full of killers. So. Him being the competitor that he is, too, I imagine there's not too many people in this building more <laughs> excited that Larson is here than him. Yeah, I imagine he's excited to compete against them. I don't know Tanner super well. You probably you know him better than I do, Clinton. Um, he seems like the guy that would love Kyle being here for multiple reasons. Cool. Let me go beat him, and let me go prove that that attention should have been mine. Yeah, you certainly you know you see guys inside this building, or probably just in general in motorsports, but they have the confidence. They want to take on the big dog. You know, they want to prove that they are the best of the best. And um, Tanner Thorson is definitely one of those guys. I mean, you know, some people see that competition and just turn it up to a whole new level. And I think that's Tanner. He's got a little chip on his shoulder, maybe, that Kyle's getting all the hype right now. And 
he wants to go out and show, hey, guys, I, Kyle's here. I don't, I don't give a crap. I'm going to go run the shit out of this thing and, and get her done. So I just think of that clip we saw the other night when he was down at the bottom of the ramp and just saying, hey, let's go to – I don't yeah. remember who it was he was talking to, but, you know, elbows up. Let's, yeah. let's you know, bleep and go. He was ready, and uh, I think he's going to, you know, bring that into his race car as he always does. We saw another guy who I'm sure is pretty amped up and ready to go tonight, one of the guys who's a contender for one of those lock-in spots, Brady Bacon, the macho man. Got a broken arrow, Oklahoma, driving for the Hink family, the 21H machine. Landon Crawley was just in your screen as you get a look at Brady. Beautiful Petroleum Alliance of Oklahoma sponsored car. Teammate Cameron Key here on the week. Cameron looked awfully good. If they learned anything for Brady's operation coming forward, he's going to be in good shape. Here is your surprise of the race of champions, and he's starting inside row two in heat race number seven. Carter Sarf. Sarf looked great. He's a guy that's got yeah. some other drivers talking about how good he looked as well and could make some noise. He's starting on that same heat race with Tanner Thorson a row in behind him. Caleb, you and I just, you were listening, but Matt Dillner's been going around, he and Tyler, and asking people who they thought were going to win and lock in, and Timez said that Carter Sarf was a guy that not many people were talking about, and Timez said he's a gasser, and he thinks he's got a shot to lock in tonight with one of those top two spots. Outside row number two for the black, green, and white tail tank, 02 of Ashton Torgerson. Week off a golden driller win for him at the Tulsa shootout. Welcome back to the bowl, Ashton. Out of Glendale, Arizona now. Team and family formerly out of Medford, Oregon. Matt Westfall, car number 54. He has been a darling of a lot of pools and dirt drafts and stuff for years past, as he always seems to be undervalued. Westfall has new power this year in the 54 car, the Ludlow Falls, Ohio driver, one of the dominators of the Boss Series. Keep an eye on him. He's outside row three in that same seventh heat race. Eleven C car, Mike Woodruff. Woodruff in the eleven C. I always look at that car and think Chet Gerke. Yeah. I just can't stop myself, unfortunately. But nope, it is Mike Woodruff. Satanta, Kansas. And the MPV Express number seven, Landon Crawley, one of the newest outlaws, going to go out in the road and hang out with Double Down Jason Sides. Yeah. See the world. He's not going to learn anything new hanging out with Jason Sides, that's for sure. No way. Not a bit. <laughs> 17B of Josh Boffman out of Odessa, Texas, a driver who has seen the world a couple of times as he's been up and down the road traveling in wing sprint car racing. And finally, 2R, Matt Rossi. Rossi out of Peoria, Arizona as the green flag's out in the final session. around the Expo Raceway and everyone a little bit chaotic down the back stretch there. Matt Westfall popping your screen behind Rossi in the two car. Fastest Rossi. in cars in this session right now, Brady Bacon. Although Carter Sarf moving up here late to make some noise. Andrew Deals, 15 car out of the raceway. Just saw him flash in the screen. And that's going to do it. So Ethan Mitchell, fastest lap tonight at a 10.858. Kyle Larson, Brady Bacon, Jesse Love, Carter Sarf, Ricky Thornton Jr., C.J. Leary, Tanner Thorson, Tim Buckwalter, and Casey Schumann. A lot of those lap times got really tight, packed in together, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, well, we saw a couple more guys climb into that 10-second bracket with Bacon and Love. And then under 11-1 is what it took to get into the 10-second bracket or excuse me, into the top 10 in Dirt Draft Hot Laps. Casey Schumann in 11.085. Spencer Bass in the first one out in 11.129. So, definitely more race guys, quick tonight. Yeah, definitely more guys tonight in the 10-second bracket than I think the last couple. I don't think we had any last night. Somebody knocked on the door, but I don't know if we yeah, got there. Yeah, I don't think and we one did. One was close. 
It's amazing what 24 hours will do for your memory. <laughs> <laughs> hey, tonight, coming up, once we get through our eight heat races, our D mains and C mains, drivers only segment is coming up for qualifiers. Clinton's going to be here anchoring right in the middle, making sure that everybody behaves and does their thing or behaves well enough and does their thing. But I guess we can spoil it now. Feels like it. Dylan Walsh coming in to do the play-by-play -play for those four. And uh, joining us in the booth, the uh, master of Inferno armor, Kevin Thomas Jr., going to be yeah. our uh, third guy in the booth. We have secured the services once again of your driver for Vermeer Motorsports. Chris Windham's supposed to be going to the infield. Cool. Up top, winners, <laughs> heat race winners <laughs> interviews... Thomas Meserol. So that's what we've got on the lineup for the drivers only. That should keep people tuned in just yeah. for that alone. On yeah, their absolutely. toes, right? Yeah. So uh, keep your seven-second delay button ready to punch and hit just in case. But that should be fun. <laughs> so drivers only is coming up for qualifiers here tonight and excited to welcome those guys in and give them a chance to share their perspectives on everything else that's going on. Uh, part of what we're doing here is interacting with you guys out in the world. So, get a chance. Hashtag, tweet your flow seat. Uh, tag, NOS Energy Drink and Flow Racing for your chance to win. I believe we were giving away a custom NOS Energy Drink fridge. Nice. I think that's what I saw on the uh, release. I'll double check and confirm that. But yeah, do that. Enter to win. Interact with us. We want to know what exa exactly you're seeing, what you're thinking. And what you're doing. So check it out. Hashtag tweet your flow seed. Tag at NOS Energy Inc. And at Flow Racing for your chance to win. Timeout coming in the building. Opening ceremony is due up next as you're tuned to our live broadcast of the 38th Annual Chili Bowl Nationals here on Flow Racing. Presented by NOS Energy Drink. Welcome back to Thursday night coverage of the Chili Bowl live on Flow Racing. You late model fans are going to like this nugget that I'm about to throw out. It's the first time in Chili Bowl history that we have two PDC winners competing in the field. And one of them, the most recent one, is Ricky Thornton Jr. Ricky, 
a top-notch ride for you at this Chili Bowl. Of course, you've competed in it a couple years now, but how pumped are you to have a ride like Reinbold Underwood Motorsports, which has had success in this building without a doubt? Yeah, I feel like it's definitely one of the top teams here. Uh, super excited. Andy called me earlier this year and just was like, hey, do you want to come run one of my cars? And I'm like, I for sure wasn't going to turn that down. So hopefully we have a good night. Uh, I feel like we learned a little bit Monday night in that race champion. So I feel, uh, feel like we have a little bit of luck. I think we'll be pretty good. You were so close to a stock non-wing driller at the shootout, blowing an engine while leading with just a couple laps left. How much of that is still in the back of your mind? Do you look at this as like an unfinished business type of week? Uh, I mean, yes and no. Uh, completely different car, uh, different different race. But I mean, uh, anytime you can win a driller, no matter what what it is, it's it's pretty special. So it uh, it sucks to be close and not get it. So I would say no added pressure uh, for from anyone, but I'd say a little added pressure on myself. I. Uh, I feel like we, we got a car capable of doing it, and uh, now I just got to go out and do my job. They say some fender guy from Vado left wild by shootout to come run this thing. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, hopefully, we can duke it out here later uh, for the win or something like that. Uh, I've been, been watching Vado a little bit. Bobby's been really good. It uh, looks like all Longhorn cars have been really good. So it, uh, it's pretty cool to have Kyle come back after, after missing a year, and uh, hopefully we can outrun him. All right, Ricky Thornton Jr. was pretty quick in hot laps earlier tonight. He'll be out in heat race number six tonight as we go back to the booth. In fact, he was, Connor, sixth quick overall for Ricky Thornton Jr. in that Reinbold car. Awesome run for him and uh, sets up well his heat race. Coming up later on the program, he is inside heat race, uh, inside row three, heat race number six. And that's a fun heat race, guys, because he's right behind Jesse Love and right next to J.J. Daly with a guy named Jeffrey Newell also in that one. So heat six should uh, be a bit of an adventure. There's a couple of heat races tonight that are really, really scary. And there's a couple of heat races tonight that uh, look like lands for a couple of drivers, depending on how we get there. Yeah, I think right, heat number four has a lot of attention. Um, we mentioned it. I mean, C.J. Leary, Kyle Larson, Tim Buckwalter, Casey Schumann, and our fastest in dirt draft hot lap, Ethan Mitchell, are all together in heat number four. I mean, that's got to be the one that jumps out the most, but... You know, Spencer Baston, Ryan Bernal both have good opportunities to pick up a solid amount of passing points and set themselves up well for a qualifier. Tanner Thorson and Car Carter Sarf are right near each other there in heat number seven. So there's uh, a lot of storylines. Brady Bacon's got a good opportunity there in that last heat race. Bacon's got a really funky heat race coming up in heat race number eight. So the nine cars involved in that include some guys that have Picked up feature wins in a lot of different places. J.D. Black is on the pole of that. Ashton Torgerson is outside of him. You'll remember Ashton was uh, outside row number one for his A feature preliminary night last year. That second row of that heat race is Andrew Deal. We know how good he is around this place. Johnny Kent. Third row of that heat race has got Josh Boffman in it. And then, of course, Bacon towards the back and Landon Crawley. So heat race number eight is up. Uh, stacked and stout and ready to go. Let's kick it down to the house on the stage for opening ceremonies. At this time, we ask that each every one of you please rise for tonight's invocation, track chaplain, Tim Spillman. Can we all pray? Father God, once again, we pause and we thank you for all of your blessings and all of your love. We thank you for our being here at the Chili Bowl Nationals and I, we ask that you would bless all the hard work that's went into putting it on this great event. Father, we thank you we can assemble like this in freedom because of all the military that's standing around this world and on our shores to keep each and every one of us safe. And Father, we ask you to bring them all home safe very soon. We thank you for all the sponsors that come along to help make all this possible. And now, Father, we ask you to bless and keep safe all of our drivers, crews, officials, and all of these great fans. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Tim. We ask you to please stay standing, gentlemen, remove your caps for the singing of the national anthem, Maggie Ernst. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight 
rampart or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land Guys, did you know Maggie Ernst, our national anthem singer tonight, is Dan Parisi's personal vocal coach? That's why Dan sounds so great in our ears. That's how it goes every I get time, it. right? <laughs> <laughs> we are going to take another time out. Heat races are coming up live from the Thursday edition of the Chili Bowl Nationals. Our live coverage continues here with the 38th Annual Chili Bowl Nationals on Flow Racing, presented by NOS Energy Drink. Rod and Supply is involved with a variety of motorsports as well as industrial applications with many different types of products. Since 1989, Rod and Supply has provided superior products priced competitively. Whether you're racing at the circle track or drag strip, rock climbing, or going off-road, Rod and Supply is an assortment of Rod and Radius Rods. And specialty products to keep your equipment moving. Rod and Supply's experienced staff is ready and willing to help you with your needs. Their promise is to continue to provide a superior product with superior service so you can stay in front of the field no matter what it is. To learn more, go to rodandsupply.com. A little pit walk on the way back as you get a look at the CB Industries cars that have already gone this week, or at least three of the four of them as we uh, wait for the Wiedemann 81 to come out for the Friday night edition. If uh, you look to the all the way far left, it'd be Jesse Love's 84 staged up and ready to go out of CB Industries tonight as the first heat race rolls down the ramp here for Chili Bowl Nationals night number four. Caleb Hart, Chris Moore, Clinton Boyles in with you. Our great crew of guys, including Connor Wade, Brian Ward, Earl Hoon. Chris Wilner is uh, on production duties tonight, but we'll get him back tomorrow. Chris is out. Uh, he's actually, enjoy we don't let him out very much to get some time off, so he's going to go sit in the stands. His wife is here. Mags is hanging out, so should be fun for him. He gets a night to relax a little bit and see things from a different perspective. He seems like he'd get a little too wild if you let him out too much, you know? Got to be careful yeah, with that. That least short. I'm sure his wife knows about that. <laughs> a good time out and about. It's been fun. We've uh, A lot of us have gotten out and about in the Tulsa community here over this week and over some time. Clinton, you golfed this morning. Yep. More, you were part of uh, the foursome that got a delayed start due to the <laughs> frosty grounds. Yeah, but, we got uh, to play nine this morning. How'd you score us? I did. So we did a little scramble. So me and Earl played against uh, Kyler. And uh, Will. And Audio Will. Yep. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, no, we had a good time. Those guys had the rank club. So we really kind of kept score, kind of didn't. Just hit some mm. hit some balls. And, uh, 
Don't get me wrong. I kept me in Earl score. Okay. I kept me in Earl score. Kyler and, and Will did not keep their score. Is that so. because they were off chasing balls in the in the scrub all day? <laughs> you could say that. You know, it just when you're car path only, and you know, you're for us, we're against the time clock. We got to sure. kind of move along. Sure. It's kind of hard to keep score when you know that it's not really going to be a real score anyway. Heat race number one on the racetrack. Tim Kent, Brad Mosen make up row number one. Tom Dunkel and Sean McClellan in row number two. Matt Sherrill and Kate Morton in row number three. Chase Johnson and Parker Jones in row four. And Daniel Robinson and Cole Schroeder in row number five. First heat race. Priority on moving forward in every single one of these heat races. It's worth 100 points to win off the pole position in this one. 105 to win from second, 110 from third, etc. so on and so forth. And you had said earlier, cutoff for qualifiers stand around 74 points traditionally, 74.2 is the Thursday night average. And uh, I want to say it was 93. I, I would be smart. I would just save the picture so that I haven't, <laughs> don't have to keep looking for it. But I believe it was, here it is, is, yeah, 93 is the cutoff for the inversion. Okay. So... You'll have the general idea of how that goes. Walkopedia at Walkopedia uh, has a really great chart that he posts for every day of what the format is going, what the point scoring is, and then he keeps unofficial points as it goes. So if you guys want to keep up on that, it's a great place to take a look at that. Uh, again, unofficial, but a good place to keep up with your lifetime if you want to figure out who is going at, where. At the very least, you get a good general idea of what's happening from Walkopedia officially. Uh, the Chili Bowl Nationals, their Twitter page, Facebook page, will put out the right. official 40 cars to go to uh, the qualifiers and, and be in the invert. You guys see the number three car out and around the racetrack who had fired a little bit earlier. That's Cole Schroeder out of Montana. Schroeder, one of seven drivers eligible for the Northwest Award that's been put together by uh, Andrew Kunis, and that's the Shayna Barnes Memorial Northwest Award, highest finishing driver from Montana, Idaho, British Columbia, Washington, or Oregon is going to take home an additional $2,227 from the event. So extra $2,200. Schroeder is eligible to win that award. Early leader in the clubhouse for that is Gary Taylor. It goes to the highest finishing driver from any of those states from Saturday night's A-Main events. So thank you, Andrew, for putting that together and everybody that's helped donate in and to that cause in uh, memory of Shana. Shana, miss you a ton as we are ready to dice them up, slice them up, rack them, stack them, and let them go. Tim Kent and Brad Mosen in row number one of this. Row number two featuring the JFM car of Tom Dunkel and Sean McClellan who McClelland, with that equipment, that spot, he is in a position to really do some damage here. Yeah, super nice opportunity here for Sean Mack to uh, capitalize, get some points. Great, great ride opportunity for him. One of the nicest guys in the pit area that you're ever going to come across. <laughs> but a fierce, competitive racer nonetheless. Yeah. Put the helmet on. Thanks, Change. Mosen from the front row and Kent's coming off corner number four. Well, oh, Kent didn't fire. I believe. Well, we're going to get a restart, obviously. Yeah. But the question is how they're going to score it. Kent to a stop at the bottom at turn number one, unfortunately for him. Tim Kent is a big guy. Yeah, that's a full grown man in that race car. Is it? All right, so take a look at taking a look at the front of that of observation of the Kent car here in just a second. But here's a look, and yeah, Kent just never comes yeah. up to speed. Lucky that we didn't end up having anything yeah. worse behind him. So take a look at that midget, Clinton. Fifth bar, anti-roll yep. bar, or sway bar if you prefer. Split rack torsion bar <laughs> midget on the front. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of wild. Not something you see all that often, I, probably ever. Tim Kent to the work area for now. As I think that's keeps on rolling. Never, yeah. never hung a left. A couple of lights are already out. Down and yeah, we're not wasting any time today. Shuffle the inside row forward. Good opportunity here for Tom Dunkel inside row number one. Although it'll be most to take oh, off. Look oh. out, Sean McClellan. Oh, I feel like I put the whammy on him. He bounces to a stop at the. And to turn number two, and now he's going to have to rally from the back. That was so close to, like, one of the normal 
chili bowl yeah, that was crashes that you see from a car that's just got too much grip. Colin White. Yeah. Just the other day. McClellan did a good job, really, to keep all four wheels on the ground. And we will see, but I believe his heat race is going to be able to continue with a lot of work to be done. Outside left rear beadlock might be the only reason he's got a left rear tire still with air in it. He gets it deep right here, hard on the gas, and it just comes up and whoo. Yeah. Um, yep. Biked up, was lucky to get the thing settled down as much as he was before taking her to the back of the field. Oh. Try this one again. McClelland is in the uh -oh. work area. And Nerf Brian Ward's on the move. Nerf bar's in the left rear tire right there. They got a wheel wrench trying to push it forward. Yeah, what Clinton said is exactly right. Uh, the tire is actually not flat itself. The Nerf bar is just bent back uh, into the left rear tire and rubbing up against it. So uh, they brought a wheel wrench down. I think uh, they thought they were going to have to change the tire, but that wasn't the case. And now they're trying to use it to pry that Nerf bar, or Nerf, Nerf bar forward and get McClellan back out on the racetrack. This is where those battery-operated Sawzalls come in handy. <laughs> Good news for them Ryan, is that the yellow lights Ryan, are still you're on. strong. Just reach in there, give that thing a yank. How come you didn't say that to Connor? Well, Connor's not that strong. <laughs> <laughs> well, <sighs> they've got the lights out. You did it, Caleb. Ah, whammy Chun McClellan. I feel terrible. <laughs> Dunkel and Mosin. Green flag. Brad Mosin sailing the Bondio car into one and two, looking good through the corner. Just absolutely taken off from Dunkel. Who rides the bottom of the speedway around three and four. He's in second, Matt Sherrill. Second opinion auto repair car looking to go outside in. He's up to second now. Cheryl, original starting spot, was back in fifth, so five to two for him in the early going. Yeah, he's, he's a couple laps complete. He's got it working. Chase Johnson, Johnson able to make a move. He'll go now, what is seven to three for the 31B, as you see the three of Cole Schroeder there nearly get up on the bike, working on the berm. Daniel Robinson started in ninth, ninth of 10. He's up into the top five, looking to get another one. Sequencing out perfect for Robinson, the veteran, Sammy Swindell's best friend, as they come off the bottom at turn number two. That's Dunkel and Robinson. Robinson oh. wants fourth. Cole Schroeder, look out, big boy, settle her down. Ian Parker Jones duking it out in behind him as Robinson moves up into position number four. Robinson, the bird heard around the world, kind of became famous for that, but he's a solid. Solid runner here at the Chili Bowl has been close to making the A-Main on Saturday night on a handful of occasions. Meanwhile, Matt Sherrill oh. trying to put the moves on Brad Mosen for the top spot. Mosen gets away. Here comes Johnson. Big deal there for Chase Johnson. Yeah. That little boo-boo by Sherrill hurts him. Mosen ends up getting the win. 105 points for him. And now let's play some calculating behind him. Johnson whose original starting spot was seven, now goes seven to two, and that's worth 118. And Cheryl goes five to three instead of five to two. Which is 96. Robinson's nine to four is worth 104. So, so quickly. Throwing down some numbers early yes, here, yeah. but 118 right off the bat for Chase Johnson. Big deal for the Dave.com car, and Johnson, yeah. who's equally good across multiple disciplines is uh, set an early mark to beat for a lot of these guys. Let's take a look at heat race number two. Kyle Spence has got the pole with Eddie Tafoya Jr. next to him. Whit Gastineau and Zach Milliken in row two. Joe Boyles tentatively scheduled for the inside of row three. Tom Harris next to him. Taylor Ferns, Rodney Westover, and Jeff Stassa. Your nine cars going eight laps here in our second heat race. Connor Wade ready with our K1 race gear interview. The Bondio 47, Brad Mosin gets the win in heat race number one. Brad, it looked like on uh, the couple initial starts, Kurt fired off really well and you're able to uh, get out to a bid lead early. How crucial was that to winning that heat race? Well, it's everything, you know, the, the chili bowl is stacked, so you've got to get out front and stay there. So hats off to Andy and the boys. They've, they've given me an absolute rocket ship. This thing's just so nice to drive. Um, we struggled earlier in the week at practice, but 
we fixed all of that, so now we're good. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's been 14 years since you've been at the Chili Bowl. How pumped are you to be back in this building racing midgets here again? I'm really pumped, you know, I've, I've, I've been racing midgets for 19 years now. I'm getting old, but, um, you know, my wife convinced me to come up here, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things that you just can't turn down. When Andy called me, she said, you've got to go up there and get into it, and I'm, I'm glad that we did, so thanks, Hayley. Hi to guys at home, everyone that's watching. See how we go. Auckland, New Zealand's Brad Moston gets a win in heat race number one and his return to the Chili Bowl. Yeah, Moston's a real quality racer, and from what the stuff they learned on the Dom car the other night, Dom got progressively better as that night went on. I think they're in a pretty good place to start this night off and 105 points in pocket as well. Did as well as you can do there, starting from the outside of the front row and had some, uh, had some company there late. Cheryl was trying hey, to put some pressure on him. Had a big moment. He kind of got tight, seemed like got on the brakes and stalled for a second. So maybe something the other guys have to look into. So Jeff Stoss is 91 out and on the racetrack. As he'll go off dead last in this one, Eddie Tafoya Jr. in the 73 outside row number one. You saw on your screen with Gastineau. I've seen Gastineau pick up some wins here in the arena in the 2E with a uh, multiple time feature winner and a fixture with the Oil Capital Racing Series that you see here around Oklahoma. This weekend, the 2E car out and on racetrack running for Jim Ellison Racing, Spike with an Esslinger underneath the hood. So field getting locked in. Kyle Spence front row looking to duplicate the great couple of nights that his teammates Chase McDermott and Michael Facinto have put together. Let's see if he can bring home 100 points in the 9U. And uh, we can't officially say Joe Boyles is going to be a scratch, not out there on the racetrack. Points are calculated from your starting position on the drop of the original green flag not the posted lineup, so that puts a driver like Ferns now up to fifth instead of seventh on your start. Good looking start coming to green for Spence and to Foya. Oh, oh, oh. Tom oh. Harris almost just went sailing, settled it back down and got to the inside. So Harris, thankfully didn't drop too far oh, behind man. for him, while Gastineau with a handful coming off the corner. As down goes Taylor Ferns. Ferns has gone seven to three, although Gastineau will get Taylor back coming through the corner. Well, for Ferns, it will be five for his initial starting spot. So Ferns, five to four right now. Gastineau able to rally and get the spot back, gets back to third. Ferns swings a little bit wide. Then you've got the 91 of Stasa. Stasa credited with a seventh place starting spot. So trying to hang on, maybe get a little bit more, but he's got Tom Harris right there to his inside now. Oh! Harris, oh, it stalled her out and coming up and over Stasa. He had kept that going. There's an outside chance he would have been able to keep the spot, <laughs> but wow. Tom Harris has had a handful early on in this contest as well. A lot of drivers are uh, fighting either the race car, or the race track, or a combination of both. Yeah. Quad in behind Stassa. Let's take a look at the Eibach replay, and here they go. Two cars. Harris into the corner, settled her down from the wheel stand. Front con tire contact from Stassa to the rear of Harris. Both cars suffer both cars to the back. I don't know how hard to place much blame there. I mean, Harris looked about as far down to the bottom yeah. as he could get. Didn't really drift up. Had had some advantage on Stassa there. Oh, Kyle Spence. Just sent him through. He went through the infield. The rest of the field is going to catch up. It's a little so. shortcut. Yeah. <laughs> Saving gas, maybe. Joker maybe some methanol. See if everyone's cars take off. It didn't. Man, that was a sloppy start. <laughs> I Sloppy all over. <laughs> Not just the start. Spence, second try. Tafoya, Gastineau, one through three. Five laps to go. Oh, boy. Talk Somebody went big. Big time. Big time upside down. You saw that coming down the front straightaway. We caught it just out of the corner of the screen. So Harris 
goes from bad to worse, unfortunately, in the 97K. Officiating staff out there to check him over and look at the race car, but boy, tonight, this has not been a great start for Harris at all. No, neither the initial start or this restart. I think Tom Harris is firing off behind cars and running over tires, essentially. It's a tough break when sometimes the car in front of you just, you know, it doesn't take off or, you know, maybe just doesn't have the motor that you have. Um, get a look at our iBox Springs replay of what actually happened here. And, yeah, just you know, two almost, cars ahead yeah. of, of Tom doesn't fire and you got one in between that you can't see and you're wide open and just a tough break there for Tom Harris. Walk in the pit area earlier and some team was kind of talking about strategy tonight versus what they had seen last night. A couple of drivers who were going to be stuck at the back of the pack in the early starts and restarts, their team owners and guys who had raced last night saying, hey, you know, maybe that first corner, first lap, just back off. Yeah. Give them a foot or two, right? Because you don't know where guys are going to go, and especially given track conditions. Brian Ward, you're there. What do you see? Yeah, looking over this car, the chassis looks good, rear end looks good. It got both front tires, got bent bends on the beads of both of them, one of the bead locks, the front tie rod across there, front sh the left left front got the majority of the impact, left side nerf bar, but I think it's just a little bit of bolt-on stuff, they'll be able to come back out for a lower main later. So guys, Skegness Raceway, the sponsorship on that car, is a quarter mile tarmac or pavement racetrack in Marsh Lane, Skegness, United Kingdom. When are we going? Well, that depends. <laughs> it's got unique wide bends and short straights offer the best banger and stock car racing in the country. Monster truck, dot, 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 something else. Can't see it, but yeah, when are we going? <laughs> I'm in. Sounds like fun. I guess we'll have to look at a schedule. All right. Uh, they open tomorrow at 10 a.m. All right. We can do that. We can make that flight. Yeah. If Larson can do it, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Might have more resources than we have available to us. I think so. Well, Kyle Spence, safest place on the field, has been in front and away from everybody. Eddie Tafoya Jr. is second. Whit Gastineau is third. Taylor Ferns is four. Rodney Westifer is five. I think Zach Milliken's still running the 9X. He'd be sixth. And Jeff Stasa is seventh. Gastineau up to leave a little love tap on Tafoya. Ooh. Once again through the corner, got a little close. Tafoya right on the bottom, and there is the other 70, well, another one of the 70, 71 of Taylor Ferns. Down to the inside, trying to find some room around with Gastineau. Oh, Gastineau swinging wide and a little bit loose there off the corner. He'll lose a little bit of ground at Tafoya trying to make it up. The three of them stay relatively close. Kyle Spence is not close. He's driving away and West Haver trying to get a little bit closer. Started eighth. If he can grab a spot or two, West Haver started eighth. What a bicycle so, that was we yeah. saw from Gaston. A way to he settle that down. Everything but crash that thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kyle Spence. He's broke. Yeah, you saw heard, it lost yeah. a lot of speed. I heard an engine go bad, and I almost think that goofed up Eddie Tafoya because he had lifted at the line too. <laughs> I mean, the gap between Tafoya and Gasano closed almost a whole second, and wow, that was crazy. So Tafoya, yeah, literally shut her down right after the start finish line, but still picked up the win. So he's got a hundred behind him. Tafoya two to two, Gastineau three to three. Ferns five to four, just not yeah. a gigantic scoring heat race there out of any of those guys. We'll see if Kyle Spence does an interview up top. He's gonna have to stop for tech for sure, but get an interview in if those guys need to get back and start an engine swap of some sorts. The good news for them is that there are D main scheduled tonight. So that's yep. two additional 10 lap races in which they'd have to pop a new power plant in that if they've got a spare, which we assume most teams at least have access to one spare motor but we'll find out as heat race number three is down the NOS Energy Drink. 
Ramp and the NOS Energy Drink Ramp Cam as Heat Race 3 featuring Joe Walker and Joey Worth, Miles Doherty and Dalton Camfield, Frank Beck the third and Corey Brink, Dylan Menz, Jacob Harris, first time ever in a midget for Harris, and Spencer Baston from Lebanon, Indiana, one of the high limit sprint car drivers in the 1S, going off from ninth. When you were looking at Dirt Draft when the lineups came out, Spencer Baston got a lot more popular when he saw the drivers with him compared to his draw and where he is, but our good race car drivers in this, Joe Worth from the outside of row number one. Uh, again, just said Jacob Harris first time in a midget, but the guy pretty accomplished as far as wing sprint car driving goes up in Northeast Texas. Part of the crew up there wins a lot of races along with his brother in the Harris family. As you can see, Spence getting out of the car, popping the NOS hat on. And Earl's ready to go. Earl, Kyle Spence, that may not be a great situation going on. Yeah, Kyle, you were able to get the victory there, but you came across the line a little slow. What happened? Yeah, it seemed like it dropped the valve or something and uh, just lost power to last lap and a half, two laps there. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's salvage salvageable and we'll have to see what we can do from here on out. Did you have any indication at all? No, it just kind of let loose and right at the checkered, I just knocked it out and shut it down as quick as I could. Kyle Spence trying to save the engine when he was coming to the checker flag, guys, so they got their work cut out for him early on here this evening. All right, Earl, thank you so much. As here it is, heat race number three, the Dave McDalby car, Dylan Menz from Jabuma, Queensland. International flavor here in this one. Dave McDalby cars have run good over the course of the week. Let's see if uh, Dave and Robert have picked the right guy here in men's to pilot that car did some good results. He's inside of the fourth row. I'd imagine Spencer Baston's kind of rooting for him to <laughs> cut the path. Spencer can just follow through. Well, that's part of the benefit yeah. of starting ninth, though, in a heat race where you are the last guy. He can kind of swing to either lane he wants to go going into turn number one. Yeah, and I think if Spencer's smart here, he just stays patient. Yeah, give yeah. yourself a little room. You're not going to win the thing in the first corner, but you can definitely lose it. So, um, yeah, hey, kind of like you talked about, Caleb, <laughs> that first corner, first lap even might be worth just kind of minding Survive. your P's and Q's and, yeah, just seeing what happens. And only, well, now that outside I mean, row just needs to bump up a little bit here. But we've dropped two to three cars per race, just in attrition already in these heat races, given the quality of, uh, of driver, car, etc with based in last year's um, race of champions winner you'd think that he'd be able to pick off some naturally as well so give yeah. you three spots pick up three spots and there's a monster point run through the turn we're green worth from the outside shoots his way into turn number one looks awfully good doing so everybody escaped turn number two three and four, see if we can get this first lap in the books. And hey, there's Spencer Baston who's picked yeah. off four already. Great opening lap for him. Super patient lap for him around the bottom. Let everyone else get tight, slide up, whatever they want to do, and you're just going to kind of roll right on by. Right, another one right there. So, yeah, yeah good good opening two laps for Spencer. Now he can go race. Yeah, he's not done. Nine to four already, and doing it so quickly, the top three, it's not like they've gotten away. Base is now going to go nine to three. Still five more trips around. Joey Worth is leading. Joe Walker is second, but neither are out of reach for Spencer Baston. No, it was only 1.4 seconds between your leader and Baston the last time around. This time by stays exactly the same. So Baston made no ground there. Worth doing a good job of yeah. setting pace as the front runner. As we look backwards, that's men's of the OAM trying to wrestle that car around. Corey Brink is up to the back of Dalton Camfield. There's the battle for second base and Scott Walker in his sights. Yeah, Worth has actually pulled away from these two. Oh, Walker, a big wheel stand off of turn number four as they come to the to the go sign. Baston will cross him over. But Holy smokes, guys. Man. Corey Brink up and over big. Yellow flag out on the racetrack. That'll single file us on a green-white checkered restart. But Corey Brink caught that out of the corner of my eye. You saw more of it than I did, Clinton. He uh, got some airtime. Yeah, extremely high up near just near the upper end of our fence. Safety crew on hand. Brian Ward getting a workout early tonight. As we'll take a look at the Posky's Performance Parts speed shot. 
Spencer Mason will have to give that spot back to Joe Walker. But Joey Worth definitely no slouch. He's your race leader, and he, like you said, Chris Moore, he was pulling away from the field. He's got a really nice high rod. Joey's ran a lot of years around the uh, central Illinois region. Yeah, you look at the uh, best laps. He's 11.059. Joe Walker was running yeah. second, was 11.4, and Basin's was 11.2. Now, Basin obviously hasn't quite gotten a perfectly clean lap. All right, so understand we're having a little bit of problem with wireless technology down trackside at the moment, but we did get a thumbs up from the uh, crew down there. So good to know that, although the safety crew is still attending to over at the scene. We are going to go red flag here. And that seems like a great time for us to dip out and take a commercial break. Red flag on the racetrack for an accident for Corey Brink. And we'll be back with the conclusion of Midget Heat Race number three coming up next here at the 38th Annual Chili Bowl Nationals on Flow Racing presented by NOS Energy Drink.
Welcome back. Coverage of the 38th annual Chili Bowl Nationals here on Flow Racing continues. We're under red flag conditions with two laps to go here in heat race number three. Unfortunately, Corey Brink out of South Dakota took a uh, big tumble down the front straightaway. Um, here's what we know on Corey's uh, standpoint is that he is alert and communicating with race officials down trackside at this time. Um, so that is all that we can pass along right now that we actually have knowledge of because frankly, none of us are medical doctors and none of us are down there on the scene itself. So we can tell you that it's been passed along to us that Corey is alert and communicating with race officials and the crew down trackside. With that, we'll take another time out. We will uh, update you more as we know more coming up next here live from the 38th Chili Bowl Midget Nationals. Your coverage here on Flow Racing brought to you all week long by NOS Energy Drink. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has won the Daytona 500. You spend thousands of hours on the road. Can he do it again? Fill hundreds of horses under the hood. But every race, lap, and victory you get starts at zero. New NOS, zero sugar. Zero sugar, 100% NOS, get after it. Dave Posky's Performance Parts has been serving the Ohio River Valley and racers from all across the country since 1978, and they are the home to Hoosier Tire Ohio Valley and Octane Race Products. Stop in and shop all of the nation's top brands, including Winner's Performance, Will Wood Brakes, Bill Stein Shocks, Hyper Co Springs, Maxima Race Oils, Impact Safety Equipment, along with hundreds of others. You can also visit Dave Posky's Performance Parts online at posky.com as we ship UPS and truck freight daily. Dave Posky's Performance Parts, serving the Ohio River Valley and racers all across the country since 1978. When it comes to Magneto Ignition Performance, there's only one name that you can trust, and that's BR Motorsports Ignition Earring. Servicing the racing industry for over 30 years, our state-of-the-art Magneto Dyno Test Lab facility is equipped with the most technically advanced equipment available. And that's why crew chiefs like Paul Silva and Philip Dietz choose BR for all their ignition needs. To learn more, visit us at brpromag.com.
Welcome back to the Chili Bowl Nationals inside the SageNet Center as they finish cleaning up corner number one here on the Tulsa Expo Raceway. The driver has been extricated from the race car, pulled him out on a backboard, talked to Matt Ward, said that he is alert and communicating. He was complaining of a lot of burning in his shoulder, so they're going to take him for some uh, extra care and kind of go over everything. They got the car off the racetrack, couldn't get it out of gear, so they had to get it on the forks and scoot it out of here, put a lot of quick dry down or they had a lot of fluids on the racetrack so the tractor came out and tried to iron that in a little bit just now finished cleaning up quarter number one and we wish the best for our driver and all the other drivers competing tonight guys that's all the update we can give to you right now as we get any more from matt we will pass that along Guys, back to the booth. All right, Brian, thanks. That's Corey Brink. The 22C was the car involved in the accident as engine's about to fire back up. Uh, we have been running midget heat race number three here for about two and a half days, but we got two laps to go on it, and we should finish it off right about now. Spencer Baston has climbed from nine to three here in this heat race. That is a huge point scoring run for him early on in this. Take a look at it, nine to three on the points chart. Would give him 116. That put him second right now to the 118 scored in heat race number one by Chase Johnson. So one more spot for Baston. Give him 128 and that would be highest point scoring run we've seen of the prelims if I remember right or at least close to an extremely hard run to echo. Look at the 31 of Miles Doherty. Doherty be at the back of the back here on the restart. Joey Worth, your leader, with two to go. Joe Walker, Spencer Baston, Dalton Campfield, Dylan Menz, Frank Beck, the third, Jacob Harris, and Miles Doherty. The running order. As teams have fired their cars back up. Sounds like all systems go so far as I can hear. Yeah, I'm looking for the one to go signal this time around. We do have a new flagger tonight. Terry Maddox off coaching basketball again. So I believe we've got Chip Graham down in front. Chip flying the flags. All right. <laughs> Pacing themselves down the back straight away. We are ready to go. Worth has let him all so far. See how he picks up the RPM and that ripper chassis out there as the green is out. We're watching Baston looking for nine to two. He well, might Worth. get nine to one as Worth blows corner number one. First mistake he's made all race at the worst time. Now Baston working to the inside. Here's the white flag. Can Walker hold him off? Can Baston make it stick down on the bottom side? Good run for Walker off at turn number two. Walker not going to give it easy. Baston down low. Nine to one. Top point, Spencer Baston. You weren't sure about yeah. 128. I'm pretty confident that's the highest, the best. The only nine to one we've <laughs> seen this week. It's probably the only one we will see. Yeah. Hundred and. 40 for Spencer Baston. Big, big round of applause from your front stretch crowd there. They enjoyed that one. As they should have. Rowdy's showing a little love. Yeah, and he gave them a little back. Dylan Men, seven to four. It looks like your next highest score on that one. All the points belonging to the driver from Lebanon, Indiana. Spencer Baston putting on a show for us there in heat race number three. And all anybody left can do is tie. We've only got nine cars in the rest of our heat races, so nobody can do any better than that in these heat races. As here it is, that loaded heat race number four we've been talking about, C.J. Leary, the Alex Bowman Racing entry, will go from the pole alongside Joe Perry out of Billings, Montana. Shale Bade and Caden Sorrell in row number two. You may have heard of Kyle Larson. He'll go off fifth. Alongside of him, Casey Schumann starts in sixth. Timmy Buckwalter rolls off seventh. Alongside Lil Bundy, Ethan Mitchell will go from the eighth spot. And Christopher Townsend rounds out a stout fourth heat race here for Victory Fuel Preliminary Night. That second row of this heat race is sneaky good, Chris. We talked a lot about the big names, yeah. but... Uh, 
Shaley Bade's been really good in 305 winged action in Nebraska. And Caden Sorali is a dynamo in a micro out in California. So once those guys hit the track, keep a look at them. Let's go up top. Connor Wade has got our winner's interview. Spencer based in an early start tonight with a 9-1. to one. And Spencer, let's talk about that uh, last restart right there. You saw Worth kind of make a mistake there in 1-2. and two. How are you able to capitalize on that and then make that pass for the lead in the final corner? Yeah, just I just had to be really patient. My uh, my dad, mom and dad are at home. Hi to them. My dad's watching. He's running the numbers, so I kind of knew where I needed to be, just on base where all the other good guys are starting in their heat races. So I was uh, able to be patient and just and just kind of wait that one out. I saw Worth get bottled up there um, into the corner, and and I just didn't want to force anything, just not knowing where he was going to end up on exit. So uh, was patient and it paid off. What's the morale going to be like whenever you climb out of this race car after going 9-1? to one? Has to have you feeling good going into the qualifier. Yeah, it just has us excited to get into the qualifier. Our Sage Crew car is really fast right now. Uh, Bill and the guys are doing a good job. Um, task is not done. We're a third of the way there. Uh, so we just got to just kind of hold together here, watch the track as it goes. We were able to stay versatile there just with our package and knowing I was going to have to be able to move around a lot. So should be sitting pretty and uh, looking forward to getting that qualifier. Well, guys, that run for Spencer Baston speaks for itself. Nobody else will eclipse him. We know that. Everybody is gunning to tie him at this point in time. A lot was made of that flip in practice, and he kind of downplayed it, said, you know, hey, it was just a unfortunate deal there, just bad timing of everything, and the car's not too banged up, and we should be fine. And Guys, I swear, More than race proven. cars are faster. I'm telling I, you, you, I, can, you can bend one up and, and find three tenths. I came from the pavement world originally. That's where I grew up, a little quarter-mile pavement track at uh, Wenatchee Valley Raceway in eastern Washington. And there was a theory amongst the stock car guys that the car got faster once you hit the wall for the first time. <laughs> like, you literally had to go on and pile the thing into the front stretch fence yep. once, and then you could pick up two tenths. So. Yeah, there's a guy back home where I'm from. He's got one car he called his old blue, cut up, pieced together, clipped, this and that. He says, still the best car I've ever driven. You know, in your world, Chris, the drivers, the way that they're building modified chassis actually have a little bit of uh, a little bit of bend or um, I believe the technical term is yaw yeah. that they're putting into them. The <laughs> chassis, chassis itself isn't perfectly square and straight all the way through it. Yeah. And every, you know, and everybody's looking for, for that flex and, you know, how long they, they, they last, how, how long it takes for them to flex out. And, uh, and things like that. Everybody's searching for some, something different. We have, uh, you know, Bicknell Racing Products is kind of on top of the top of the heap right now, but uh, there's plenty of other chassis manufacturers who are working on getting faster. These guys all working on going fast here in a loaded heat number four. Keep your eyes locked in for these eight laps. It's going to be fun. Leary fires. It's Shaley Bade with yeah. the chaotic start to hurry race. Schumann. Already up into fourth, and oh, oh no, oh. we just, oh, what a start. Well, we'll all do it again. Yeah, Joe Perry is upside down in the 28J there on the back straightaway. Kyle Larson is going to be thankful to have another shot at this one. Add one to the gravity count here for the uh, weekend as, boy, it's been expanding here early today. Perry has sat down. You can see him moving in and amongst the cockpit there is... Official saying, hey, come on through, help us out. Here's the Ibox Springs replay. Just a lot of gas sideways and front end up, and these things will snap on you in a hurry. That, I mean, you kind of think, oh, why didn't he let off sooner? But it all happens so fast out there. Guys, looking at this race car, the front end looks good, but the rear end, the right rear radius rod is sheared at the tie rod. The left side nerf bar pushed back in that left rear tire. And I noticed the Jacob's ladder had a pretty good bend in it too. So probably too much damage to repair in the work area here. But they're gonna try, they've got the left rear tire here. Dunlap in there with the impact. He can run with Ben Jacob's ladder. No big deal there. Radius rod, wheel and tire. Yeah, I got to replace those, but. <laughs> they haven't even been over to the right rear yet. No. Kevin Ramey's down here, and I told him, hey, look at that right side radius rod. So he came and walked around, took a peek at it. He's hollered up the ramp trying you're, to get one down here. I don't think you're going to be able to get that left rear tire on there. 
And that yep. poor old boy pulling on it. He's not going to make any <laughs> progress anytime soon. Another instance where we need that Sawzall down here. That's right. Uh, Brian, I keep telling you, just reach up there and grab that thing. <laughs> just because they just keep running forward. You should have seen him lifting around his bike last night after the bar. I, I can pump <laughs> a little bit of iron, but this stuff is uh, a little too beefy for me. The Oh, that little, cut, gonna, off. That little yeah. cut off wheel is not going to get her done very fast. Oh. Yeah, not fast enough. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Exercise in Futility 1 and 1, 101. Yeah. Watch your fingers. And about an hour from now, that'll be cut. <laughs> we got something that we keep in our mule, and uh, we can rip through a, they a Nerf the bar in about two or three seconds. I think they're cutting the exhaust there. No, he's he's back behind it. Okay, yeah. But there we go. He's not. Yep. Yeah. I think. I think you got to call this one quits, my brother. Well, here we go. Lights are back out. Let's see. Shaley Bade looking for a little better start here, a little smoother. Kyle probably hoping the same thing behind her. Casey Schumann loving how this one goes, though. He's quickly six to three. Here goes Larson to the inside of Bain. And you've got Ethan Mitchell and Timmy Buckwalter side by side right behind. Larson makes the move. So does Buckwalter. And just not the heat race Shaley Bain's looking for right now. So I believe that was Christopher Townsend who sent her looping in the wrong direction. Bade stopped in the 03. Back of the pack for her if she can continue going. Leary leads lap one, Sorali two, Schumann three. Here's the Ibox Springs replay. Yeah, you see Larson get by. Buckwalter's there and Townsend just trying to fill the gap and get through as quickly as possible. Almost two points there. She yeah. uh, took a shot in the shorts from Mitchell and then Townsend finished it off. I think they, I saw her give Thumbs up or two, and I don't know if she was signaling for a hook or saying she was okay. So what are we calling this? Pensive Keith Koontz? <laughs> Leary, Sorali, Schumann, Larson, Buckwalter, Mitchell and Townsend, supposed to be the running order. Pick coming for the Bade car. So C.J. Leary, third entrant from the Alex Bowman Racing Camp, who's had a very good week so far. Kevin Thomas Jr., a good A main event. Jake Swanson locking in last night. Leary's looking for 100 points to win off the pole of this. Caden Sorali in position number two. Casey Schumann, the Dunlop Performance car, looking to join Gary Taylor as both Saturday night evening portion of the show enters, preferably in an A main if you can. Look at him, the promoter of the I-70 Raceway. If Schumann can hold on to a 6-3 here, you know, even potentially 6-2, to two, that's a really solid run, I think, for this heat race. And you can set yourself up really, really nice in points. 6-3, to three, 101, it'd be worth yeah. more than uh, Larry's getting to win off the pole in this. It's going to take a heck of an effort, but uh, he's Sorale, showing some good speed. Well, Sorale won't be easy to pass, that's for uh, sure. Caden's really talented. Yeah. Like, that guy can wheel a car. Haven't seen him a lot in a midget, but we'll see what he can do. So right now, he's going to get by, and that's Buck Walter trying to make wow. Kyle Larson fans unhappy. Kyle's in last place right now. Yep. Buck Walter. Timmy does his way through, yeah. Timmy's watched Hank Davis run well the last couple of years. Win a prelim ninth, finish second. Timmy's here to run up front, guys. Left front hikes and in the air. Mitchell yeah. sneaking through. Man, Mitchell was the fastest car in hot laps here. He's got a good hot rod. This time by is going to be halfway through. Four down, four to go. Leary, Lark Sorali, Schumann, but the rest of that field is coming. Larson still, that's the first car he's passed from the back oh, of the field. Oh. That's not going to be good for either of them. No. Contact made with Townsend in the 45. Larson upside down out of turn number two. What a hectic heat race for Kyle, and there's a small fire, oil fire on the left rear. That'll burn itself out. Kyle going to be wanting to get to the work here to check this thing over. 
Townsend looks like he's got pretty significant damage to the rear end of the race car. He's going to be done. Larson. We're going to go. We're going to go red flag on might the speedway be here. Track yeah. or. No, we're going to take some attention out there in the corners. So uh, red flag for the second time in heat races here tonight on your Thursday night edition of the Chili Bowl Nationals. Four laps in, four to go here in midget heat race number four. C.J. Leary, Caden Sorali, Casey Schumann, Ethan Mitchell, Tim Buckwalter, your top five. Eyes have been on Kyle Larson, who's involved in the wreck, and now his car is pushing away from the wreck scene as the safety crew is attending to Christopher Townsend. He's okay. definitely going to take advantage of this yeah. head of the work area. Okay, cam crew well equipped. Obviously, with anything they need, I honestly don't think they will need anything at all, but... Yeah, just a check over. Seems to be rolling along okay. To the work area goes Kyle. All right, so KKM will go to work, giving her the check over. Yeah, guys, I'm down here in the work area. Right now, uh, paying attention to the front end, front bumper bent in. Won't really affect the handling of this car. Because I think the biggest thing they'll do right now is Keith, get a word in with Kyle, maybe try to make some adjustments on the setup. They need to find a little speed in that race car if they want to drive by some of these cars. We saw Kyle you know, even struggle to get by the, the cars in the back. So, um, yeah, Chuck Gurney down there on the right rear. A little air pressure change here for sure. You also have uh, – sorry, guys. You also have uh, KTJ down here talking with Kyle. I mean, just sh look at Kyle Larson, just how cool, calm, and collective – he is. I mean, when we see a lot of drivers go to the work area, they're very frantic. They're yelling at orders, communicating with the team. But he's cool, calm, and collective. Keith Coons and his guys know exactly what they're doing. Even when they were assessing the damage on the front end, Keith Coons even made some adjustments here to the shock on the left rear. But uh, don't see a lot of damage, and we'll see if Young Money, and he should, be able to join this heat race, guys. Earl, can you get a look in there at the tie rod, the radius rod that connects the left front and the right front? Um, is it bent or at all come uh, further forward towards the front end come around to the right front long connecting rod between the two tires it's yeah, going to be right behind there. the axle it's tough to see in there no all the panels it's, it, it, it's it's pretty straight boys especially now that he turned the wheels to the left so <laughs> helping you out Earl. Yeah, th thanks guys. we were taking a look at the right front from our angle and it looked like that thing had a little more is toe the right word on that one i'm trying to yeah toe out yeah toe out on it that would be typical from what we've seen but heck an extra Quarter oh. inch of toe can look like a lot, I guess. Everything's, like you said, uh, still that, pretty Here's that air pressure change. Sorry, Earl, not to interrupt you. Keith's going to go in there. There's uh, bleeders in there. And he's going to pull this out and watch. He'll click right here, and he's going into the settings. And it's, it's RP1 on the bleeder, which is running position one. And there's little arrows you just up and down. And Keith's going to, I would guess, drop the right rear air pressure a little bit. Looks like what he's doing. And say they're at nine, they'll drop to eight and a half. And... You plug that thing back in, and what that bleeder does is reads your air pressure in the tire, and if it the tire pressure is over the amount that you have set it at, it will bleed itself down to that. So if he had nine pounds in his tire from where they went out before, if he just dropped it eight and a half, it will automatically bleed itself down to eight and a half pounds. The physical effect of dropping a half pound of air pressure in the right rear right now is going to be what? Um, tight, tighten up. More right rear grip, more, uh, more stick entry to center. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm sure there's some other adjustments going on. But, yeah, that's kind of Kyle wants to be able to get in the corner harder with more grip and probably try to get going forward sooner out of the corner. Um, and that can all, you know, semi what be accomplished with some right rear pressure. It is uh, one of those situations, though, uh, every action has an equal and a, yep. it's going to do something else, right? Dropping that half pound is going to make the car handle a little different in some other area of the car as well. Well, question is, was it the right way to go? Got a pretty good mechanical crew there. <laughs> Larson will rejoin out of the back of the field. Larson just got his four practice laps that he missed out on on Sunday. Yep. And now he's just shortened his heat race a little bit. But Guys, I wanted to jump in here real quick. Uh, we talked a lot about Kyle there, but Townsend pretty shaken up, getting out of the race car, took their time to get everything cleaned up in that corner and not only getting the race car out of turn number two, but they had some significant 
fence repair over there, and that's why we had the extended time in the work area, because all the crew were over there trying to fix the fence up where the car got into it. Thank you, Brian. Well, four to go. C.J. Leary, Caden Sorale, Casey Schumann, Ethan Mitchell, Tim Buckwalter, Kyle Larson comes back out. He'll be sixth. A lot of attrition here in this one as Perry, Bade, and Townsend are retired. We'll watch and see what can be done. Leary will bring us back to green. Sorale second, Schumann third. And Ethan Mitchell up to fourth. Great run for him. He got his spot back ahead of Buck Walter. Schumann going to try to go to the outside here. Steady. Does a wheel stand. Loses a spot to Mitchell. Now he'll maybe lose a spot to Buck Walter. Schumann will lose the spot. Thought about trying to cross him back over. Timmy will maintain the spot. Schumann all of a sudden has lost all the speed he had before that red. Larson goes by and now Schumann's at the tail of the field. Yeah, that's six to three, almost six to two run. All gone now. As you look forward, Buck Walter turning into the big mover in this one. As he is to fourth, Mitchell right in front of him. Massive points up to third. Kyle oh. got in, big old tag. Managed to keep her going, that's to the checkered. And barely stayed ahead of Schumann who spins around at the end. Schumann's car broke when he was crossing that line. The right front broke on that thing. And uh, looks like Kyle Larson's gonna get the spot just barely and that's huge. That might be just enough to squeak him in a qualifier. At uh, five Larson, to five. Five to five. 72 points. He's going to well, be right on the line. Right at the cutoff. So getting back by Schumann there potentially could have saved his Chili Bowl efforts. Yeah. Leary for 100. Sorale 4-2 for 103. It's going to be Little Bundy who's going to pick up a bunch of points here. So Little Bundy starts 8th, comes up to 3rd. And that's worth 111. He's your top scorer in that one. Buckwalter 7-4. For 94 points, that's qualifier bound for him. Heat race number five lineup after that was chaotic. Noah Harris and Austin <laughs> Nye in your front row. Gavin Bichelle and Ryan Bickett in row number two. Brian Harvey, Kenny Johnson in row three. Scott Lawrence and AJ Johnson in row four. Ryan Bernal starting dead last here in heat race number five on our Thursday night of the Chili Bowl. We go up top for a K1 race gear interview. CJ Larry joins me at the top of a ramp, guys, and that was a long heat race, man. A couple red flags. I'm sure that's hard to try to get in a rhythm of things, but you know what you got to do. You got to get across that start finish line first, and that's exactly what you did. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it definitely was a marathon event. Uh, this ABR 55 Ally Racing Machine's just been uh, been really good in this building for a long time. I feel like I've. Uh, I, I really cost us last year with our uh, couple crashes, but uh, working with our friends is a lot of fun. I can't thank Alex and Jake and KT and all these guys that have put in work and keeping our stuff looking looking brand new every time it hits the track. So looking forward to uh, the qualifier. I kind of put ourselves in a hole with drawing a five and starting on the front row, but we'll make the best of it. CJ Larry, guys, he's very good at getting heat race wins in his Chili Bowl career. That would be his sixth win, and like I said, heat race win in the Chili Bowl career for CJ Larry. All right, Earl, thanks. We talked a lot about Mitchell and Larson, Buckwalter in that heat race. C.J. Leary was on cruise control. Yeah, easy Unchallenged. mode. Unchallenged. And easy mode for Sorale out front, too. Yeah. Those two guys did everything they were supposed to do. He's back behind them where all the chaos ensued. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to uh, Troy DeCare watching the program here this afternoon. Yeah. And if we're doing shout outs, Rob Pajamas, <laughs> Tulsa Shootout yeah. regular. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Rob. He's... Hey watching and enjoying his birthday, let's say. Happy birthday. As car staged for heat race number five. Justin Fiedler tuned in. I know that guy. Yeah. Podcaster extraordinaire. Great information on his podcast, Dirt Tracker Daily. It's yep. something I look forward to listening to uh, almost every single day that, that one comes out, and it was pretty hot and heavy this winter. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's been... An interesting source of information and opinion yeah. and such like that. He's done a great job with it. I love the format and I love the length. It's funny to listen to his his uh, information, ins inside information he has compared to the rumors that I hear around Indy or you go to Indy race parts and, and you hear new rumors every single day there. So it was it was a fun offseason listening to Justin and uh, all the information he came up with and 
for anyone, you know, not sure what I'm talking about, check out Dirt Tracker Daily on Twitter, I believe. It's probably the easiest way. It's yep. on all streaming platforms. The podcast is, but it's uh, usually about a seven-minute just quick clip on everything that's going on or has happened in the last few days in the dirt track world from late models to sprint cars and everything in between. And it's, uh, yeah, super, super cool show he has. It's quick. It's topical. It yep. fits in on a quick drive or whatever it is. If you want to catch up on yeah. a bunch of episodes at a time, you can do it that way, too. Usually factual also. Not very, yeah. Not very opinionated. There's not is. a lot of wild speculation, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, guys, it is Heat Race 5. We've got more to go after this. It has uh, been challenging so far. A couple of big wrecks have slowed the program down, but we'll pick up the pace as we move along in and through. As Gavin Bichel making his appearance in the Keith Coons Motorsports car from the inside of the second row. That is the pink, black, and white number five that you see in there. Be your odds on betting favorite here in the heat if we had live odds up and going. Field going two by two up in front of him. Noah Harris, who we've seen here a bunch, the Broken Arrow native. Austin Nye right next to him. Yellow light still on in and around the racetrack. Seems like we're getting an extra pace lap or so per every race. Not sure what the officiating staff is needing to look at, but as soon as they're happy, we're happy, and we will get to action. Bacon on the outside of the front row, the familiar 17 car this year with beautiful, easy to spot fluorescent orange. And then keep your eyes in the very back of the field, Ryan Bernal. I would imagine Bernal is going to look at this very similar to Baston. Okay, let lap one play out, then go. Well, for Baston, it played out and he got four spots. I'm sure Bernal's hoping for the same as we go green. Harris on the inside has got the early advantage up to the cushion out of turn number two as they lead through. That's Nye in the six car, Michelle in the five. Michelle has worked his way up into second. Harris, Michelle, Bickett challenging for third off turn number two as there's a traffic jam and here comes Ryan Bernal right through. Bernal saying thank you very much. Now Bickett swings wide and a little bit of an instant replay from what we saw earlier from Spencer based and Bernal just clicking them off and now we got one upside down. That's your race leader. Yeah. Noah Harris getting an up close look at the Expo Raceway clay. And that'll shuffle everybody up a spot here in this running order. Clint, the other night when we were checking the status of the moon, what was it? It was not full. <laughs> it's I, not. I'm not sure like the names of what the moons are, but I want to believe it was basically empty. Okay. Ibox Springs replay, and here's your race leader into the corner. Wow. Well, they were right when they said there's a lot of moisture in the track, because we're seeing a lot of front ends flying out here around the expo here on the afternoon. As Noah Harris, your race leader, just gets her up in the air by himself and got some dig to it. Now upside down he goes. Guys here working the accident scene in turn number two. They just rolled the car back once they got it down on all fours. Everything looked good on all the suspension. Didn't see any bent rods or parts, so they are ready to fire the car back up. The biggest thing is they're pulling a bunch of that soft mud from the cushion and filling in the gaps where the chassis hit in because this track is still pretty squishy, so it's pretty uh, good divots in it. You've got your feet out there, and this is your third night in the infield at this point, Brian. Is it really sticky compared to the previous nights? Yeah, I've lost my shoes about four times. <laughs> so it shows you how much water and moisture they managed to get into the surface. There is grip to be had. Now you just got to tame it, settle it down, and try not to fly things too far up there. As you get a look, Ryan Bernal has gone nine to three. And just a couple of laps. So Bochelle is now your leader. Austin Nye moves back up to second. Bernal third, Bickett fourth. And Kenny Johnson is your top five. See if Michelle can just get out of the way and make some good laps out in front without putting his car in danger. Burnell trying to work up to the high side in turn number three. 
nice easy look. Now if he can get into the corner, stick the right rear and not get the front end of the air. It's a good solid run for Ryan as he's now moved nine to two on the field. Don't look now, Kenny Johnson starting to make some moves. He goes around Bickett. Now trying to work to the back bumper of Austin nine. Kenny Johnson started in sixth. The six to three run would be a solid outing for him. He'll take it. He'll go around Austin nine. So we've got three more laps to go. Johnson will race out of your screen and now three cars on it battling for the fourth spot as Bochelle comes to two to go. Nice and easy for Gavin Bochelle. You see him sawing on the steering wheel. He sets the car up to work his way into three. He'll come to the white flag this time around. Bichelle looking good. The gap between him and Burnell is 0.9 seconds and not advancing, not growing, not shrinking. Bichelle picks up 110 points well into a qualifier. Burnell, second high in points now at 128 with the big run. Kenny Johnson, six to three ahead of the bell curve at 101. So Gavin Bushell gets a heat race win and a solid 110 point outing for him. Ryan Bernal, Kenny Johnson, Austin Nye, AJ Johnson, your top five out of heat number five. Six heat races been one we've been looking at as well because the uh, middle portion of this heat race is stacked up and ready to go. Let's give you an idea of who it is. Cameron Hagen and Cody Beard are on the front row. Jesse Love taking on Jeffrey Newell in row number two. Ricky Thornton Jr. and J.J. Yaley in row number three with Ryan Padgett, Isaiah Vasquez, and Chance Hull making up the rest of these nine cars. Going eight laps and points on the line all over the place here in this heat race. Ramp Cam has been tame so far considering the action we have seen out on the racetrack and let's go up top a K1 race gear interview with Connor. A nice three to one effort there for Gavin Bichelle. Gets his night off to a good start. Gavin able to get by some cars there early on in that race. Were you happy with how this 5G worked from the drop of the green? Oh uh, yeah, you know, just kind of stay patient there. Haven't been in a mission in a while, so just kind of getting back used to the rhythm of things that uh, Bo and these guys got the car pretty good. Now it's in my hands just to get it in front tonight and uh, uh, hopefully we'll be up there. You did pretty good in your qualifier last year. What approach will you take into this upcoming qualifier tonight? Uh, you know, I think uh, we'll have a pretty good starting spot. You know, you just got to keep going forward and just uh, don't look back. You know, it's just you can get caught up in stuff. You just got to be smart, be patient. But I uh, can't thank my guys enough, and uh, hopefully we'll be up in the top set tonight. Heat five goes to Devin Bichelle. He was sixth on his prelim night at the Chili Bowl last year, guys. Thank you, Connor. Look at the push truck in and behind Isaiah Vasquez's 35S. Last minute instructions from the official out there in the corner. Vasquez, part of a gigantic contingent out of California here. Contesting the Chili Bowl. Running for Kevin Felkins, part of a three-car team out here. Spike Chassis, that's an Ecotec power plant, so he should be down a couple of horsepower. And on a hooked-up, juiced-up raceway like that, that might <laughs> hurt him. And at the same time, it might be a little easier to handle. You see the track definitely more wet today than... In days past, I felt like the first couple of days of Brown Heat 4 was the time we saw a slick line really create and, and two groups come in. And haven't seen that just yet. Haven't got a bunch of consecutive laps of racing oh. in a heat race yet. It seems like a couple of laps and a caution, a couple of laps and a caution has been herky jerky to try to fill out the laps here in these heat races. And you would think that would almost dry it out a little bit more because you get a couple of free laps of racing on it and just cars rolling on it in general will wear it down but it honestly looks as wet as it is at the start of the night still yeah. here in the 6e race they had said that though we had seen it from chili bowl uh, uh, brad chandler his twitter steve Hahn had mentioned the same thing to me like there is lots of water in this thing and that is playing through here early on in the evening Look at it, race night, eight heat races, two Ds, two Cs, four qualifiers. So your first eight races are kind of your early point. The Ds, Cs, and qualifiers are your midpoint. Then your two B mains and your A main are the late portion of the evening. And 
with the way that it's developed right now, it's going to have to make a pretty significant change over the D's and C's for it yeah. to uh, for it to get to where we think it will be. Find out. Turn off the traffic lights and roll them around for eight times here at the Chili Bowl Nationals. It's heat race number six here on Flow Racing. From the front, Cameron Hagen and Cody Beard. Second row behind them, Jesse Love and Jeffrey Newell looking to make life difficult on your front runners. Ricky Thornton Jr. and JJ Yaley from the third row. They're going to bounce, they're oh, going to stall, oh, and we're going to stop. Guys, and I hate to say it, but I think Jesse Love caused all that. Okay. Camera doesn't lie. Jammed it in there on the start and grabbed a whole bunch of brake and stalled it and left nowhere to go for everyone behind him. There's Vasquez stopped. JJ Yaley saying that thing's hauls the four up and over. So watch Jesse Love get in here, and I think his tires lock up. Bunch of brake right there, and see him yeah. fighting the steering wheel coming to the right. Yeah, part of just getting tight. Front end knocked out of the 15. Shock and coil spring. All cattywampus on that. Both radius rods, the big old banana on that corner of the car. It honestly has the potential just to be the shock and the two radius rods. They may not have to change the entire front end, but I just don't know that we're going to get time enough in the work area for those guys to do that. Kind of yeah. depends on the cleanup in and behind them and the screen. Brian is yeah. uh, live down there. Yeah, guys, the eye in the top of that right front shock just ripped right out. The whole shock broke on the top where it bolts to it. I think the chassis mount is okay on it, but that shock's gonna have to be replaced and a lot of damage to Yaley's right front. They're gonna tow him to the work area. He was trying to get that car off him on the left side so he can get rolling and then it was pointed out to him his right front's got too much damage. All right, Brian, thank you. To the work area they go, and now the question is, for, yeah, and how quick, although it feels like we're going to get back to green flag action really yeah. fast here. We do have guys getting pushed out of the work area right now, so if they're able to get pushed out, that's going to buy JJ a little time, which he's headed up the ramp, but depending on how that shock broke, I mean, for everyone back home, two radius rods is four bolts. So we see stuff happen pretty fast at World of Allah races and stuff like that if these guys are prepared. Hole back on the track with the push car in and behind him. Complete restart coming here in heat race number six. And hole fires back off. Then there were seven from the original yeah. nine. Here we go. So points calculated off the drop of the initial green flag. Green flag is out and we're back underway. So Love once again down there at the bottom trying to make something work. It's Ricky Thornton to the outside making quick work. Did a little bit of a wheel stand there able to catch himself before Ooh. he went too far and he is not afraid working dangerously close to the right rear of that 84 machine. Now he'll drop to the bottom. It's a very narrow margin of error for Ricky and trying to get around Jesse Love there. Snuck inside him, now working on the back of Beard and the 7B. Wow, bumper cars coming off the corner between third, fourth, and fifth. And Thornton Jr., Love, and Newell. There's Beard trying to get inside. Hagen bikes it up on the berm, trying to settle it back down, getting into the corner, but loses two spots in the process. Yeah, not the corner Beard wanted there as he had a good run going, hanging on to second, challenging for the lead. Instead, he'll hand the runner-up spot to RTJ. RTJ's uh, car looks really maneuverable, although he gets in a little deep, gets over the cushion, able to hang on to it. Love, though, right to his inside. It's a nice save by Ricky, and now pounces for the lead coming off of turn number two as he'll sneak underneath Hagen. Down to two to go for Ricky Thornton Jr. Jesse Love needs this spot to put himself better into the qualifier. He'll get it down the back straight away. RTJ's car looks really good, guys, able to move against that cushion and down on the bottom. RTJ's got a good hot rod here as he works down the back straightaway. A little opening a lap. Oh, yellow lights. So no yellow lights, but checkered. they're throwing the checkered. Yeah, checkered and yellow, it's going to depend on when 
Oh, Cody Beard, it went from bad to worse. I was just going to say RTJ had that opening lap problem over there in one and two he was involved in and didn't stop him. Yeah, look at the Ibox Springs replay here for Ricky Thornton Jr., your winner, and here's how it happened. Coming into the corner, tag, you're it, and down and taking a whole nerf bar and <laughs> so handle on with. Safe side. Yeah. <laughs> So Ricky Thornton Jr., what they're showing is a checkered flag. Yeah. He was the only one to complete the lap. So 120 right. points for him. Yeah, yeah, one car stalled at the bottom of the ramp. Yeah, okay. yeah I think yeah, there yeah. was yeah. kept everyone on the racetrack. I was going to say, because the flagger is waving the checkered flag every time they go by. Thornton Jr. picking up 120. And really, that is it as far as for scoring in that one. So it's going to be an interesting cut here. There have been some drivers doing well to pick up 100, but like depth of field in that 80 to 70 range in the points has not been there. And again, we're kind of on Kyle Larson watches. Larson 72 is going to be right on the borderline of making a qualifier or not. Here's Midget Heat race number seven. Ryder LaPlante versus Tanner Thorson on the front row of this one. Carter Sarf and Matt Rossi in row number two. Lane Goodman and Matt Westfall in row three. Zach Blurt and Cody Trammell in row four. Max Adams, the Californian native originally, all by himself in row number five. And I've been excited for this one since I've seen it just based on those first couple of rows. Obviously, Tanner Thorson going to draw a lot of eyeballs, but a couple of kids going to look to come up and make Tanner earn it from the inside in LaPlante and Sarfin behind him. First, let's talk to Earl. Got RTJ up here. Ricky, dude, you might be high points, man, but it's going to really put you uh, in the hunt. Uh, tremendous run and great, great race. Good job on the heat race win. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, uh, I thought we were done after that first lap there. Uh, I got, uh, started second to try to get the bottom, uh, kind of bought all of us up. But luckily, we didn't have any damage. Uh, I got to thank everyone here at the Rheinbold, uh, Rheinbold Underwood Motorsports for giving me a great car, a great opportunity. Hopefully, we can capitalize on it on it and uh, see how we do in the qualifier. For how tricky the track is right now, you passed a lot of cars and we're seeing guys really just finishing where they're starting in some of these heat races. How much confidence does that give you going into the qualifier? Oh, it's huge. I, uh, my crew guys ran over to me right before and said, you can try the outside if you want. Uh, it's a little hairy out there, but it worked out for us. So uh, hopefully we can pass a couple cars here in this qualifier and put us in a good spot for the future. How about it, guys? Ricky Thornton Jr. coming deep in that one, able to get the heat race win. Good position for the qualifier is Ricky. Look at a smiling face and a fist bump for RTJ as he pushes off. There is Ryder LaPlante, the second of the Chandler Motorsports entries. And uh, I've talked about it a couple of times. LaPlante, got to see him practice day out at Port City. That car was very snappy with throttle response. <laughs> the second that he got to the gas, and Port's tiny, right? It's yeah. an even smaller track than what we have. Not only was it there, but it was winding up to top speed in a big hurry, and it seems like Ryder's going to have all the power available from that car to him if they can get that power down to the ground. Yeah, it's really tough sometimes, and I battled it a little bit myself in my prelim night. I felt like I'd roll around there, and my throttle was just like, bop, 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 and just... I was halfway out of control myself under yellow. So um, midgets can, they can be interesting, especially when you get the, uh, yeah, kind of small track, really big gear. Um, throttle response is, is there when you need it. And uh, it, you got a light front end. So um, yeah, everyone, everyone inside this building, I think has their hands full. Everyone's cars are set on kill mode and there's no, we're going to conserve a little bit and just take it easy here as far as setup goes. It's got to be uh, absolutely as good as, as you can be every time you hit the racetrack. So he'll go from the pole, and he's got to fend off Thorson outside of him. And you know Thorson's going to be in his head working everything that he can to make an advantage because that's not a slouch on the inside of him here on the front row. Tanner wants a good start, just wants to get out, roll around, dictate the pace of this race, and not have to chase somebody down to try to pick up additional points. Yeah, if you're riding a planet, you just can't let Tanner control your right front. What I mean by that is can't let Tanner roll up and, and just be a half car length ahead of you hovering over your right front because then Tanner dictates exactly how you can start the race. If you're, if you're underneath him but a little bit behind him, you can't gas it and have the opportunity to go out at all. You're just going to hit Tanner. So that forces you to be cautious and careful and have to turn down the racetrack and Tanner can match you at that point. Um, so something, uh, yeah, once I got to the front row, that's kind of what I tried to do. And uh, look at Tanner already. Just trying like to that. Dominate the right well, front. Well, and crowding him down. Yeah, that's, I mean, 
veteran move by Tanner. It's uh, you, you see these guys do this stuff, and I'm sure Grady told Ryder, don't don't let him bully you. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, sometimes the, the prowess and mindset of somebody like Tanner will There really, you go. Yeah. Wow, Ooh. these games are fun. Yeah. <laughs> they started quickly, too. It's going to be a rapid start. It's a pretty good one for LaPlante. As he gets down to the bottom, throws a great, <laughs> great forward grip, though, off the top of two. Yeah, that top side of one and two. We saw it. RTJ kind of showed it up there against that bit of a cushion that's developing midway up the racetrack. It's there for the use. Thornton will do so. LaPlante now trying to use it to hang on to second. But here's another fast race car and a young, talented kid, Carter Sarf, working his inside for that runner-up spot. Sarf made a big impression in the race of champions on Monday night. It's LaPlante with four of the fluff, and he'll see the position of Sarf coming off the bottom at turn number two. A couple of laps in, Thorson, Sarf, and LaPlante, one through three. Now, if you're LaPlante, you got to lock in and try and hang on to that third spot now. Keep control of the race car, learn as much as you can, and hang on to the three spot as the top three are all separated pretty well. Here's a look a little bit further back in the pack. Max Adams working the outside. He does a wheel standoff in turn number two. Adams started last in this one, trying to work on Cody Trammell in the 17 team to pick up a spot. Down low, cars bounce into one and two. Adams on the low side, the 40 shoots forward, give him position as yellow lights are on around the racetrack. We've got a caution flag, and it's Matt Rossi who was running eighth. Turned around the wrong direction. Your top three guys were gone. Thorson with a second and a half between himself and Sarf. Sarf with a 1.2 second gap between him and LaPlante. LaPlante nearly two seconds over Lane Goodman. That's how good your top three were early in this. Yeah, they definitely separated themselves. I'm sure Sarf's excited now, an opportunity Three lap dash on the back bumper of Thorson after the great run he had on Monday night. Now a chance in this heat race to measure up against one of the favorites tonight. He'll be hot on the heels of Tanner Thorson for these last three laps. Two R of Rossi guys. Nickname is the Real American, Matt Rossi. <laughs> Brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Rossi now at the back of the field. Thank you, Dean Mills, for the uh, tidbit there. He follows Blurton, who follows Adams, who follows Trammell. Then West follows the Red Tail Tank 54 in the fifth spot. Lane Goodman having a quiet heat race sitting around in fourth. Ryder will plant the double zero. Carter Sarf the five. And Tanner Thorson doing Tanner Thorson things, getting out and being really fast. We knew that this was certainly going to be a likely outcome with him starting outside of the front row. Now he's going to hang on to it for the final three laps with Sarf right there on the back bumper. Up to the top goes Tanner. Sarf down on the bottom. Lost a lot of ground to him in the middle of the straightaway, but picks some up through the apex of turn three and four. You've got the 40 up top of Adams trying to work around Trammell. Trammell holding the spot for now in sixth. As white flags in the air one more time around. Yeah, another spot or two for Adams would have been big, but it looks like he's going to run out of time. Tanner Thorson taking the young kids to school. He'll get the win in heat number seven. Carter Sarp and Ryder Plant are your top three. Lane Goodman comes home fourth. And Matt Westfall rounds out your top five. But there he is, your 2022 Chili Bowl champion, Tanner Thorson. You knew he was going to be a factor. Car looked good. Yep. Yeah, Carl looked phenomenal there. 105 points. Sarf only was a half a second behind him after three laps there. So Carter. Yeah. Is really having a coming out party here at the bowl this year. That's a good run for second. I think he lost a little bit of ground too on the restart, kind of yeah. got crossed up on the berm. And so that already cost them there a couple of tenths before they ever even got going. As our eighth and final heat race rolls on down the ramp and onto the speedway, JD Black out of Green Valley, Missouri, and Ashton Torgerson will make up row number one. Andrew Deal and Johnny Kent. In row number two, Josh Hanna rolls off fifth alongside Josh Ballman. Mike Woodruff 
And the Macho Man, Brady Bacon, make up row number four. And Landon Crawley rounds out your nine-car field. Eight more laps. And as we mentioned, the eighth and final heat race of the night. And Connor Wade is at the top of the ramp with a K1 Race Gear interview. Heat seven goes to Tanner Thorson, last year's Thursday night winner. Tan Tanner, the guys in the booth were just talking about how good your race car looked. Would you agree with them? Yeah, we're good. I still could be a little bit better right there. I uh, a little bit free underneath the cushion where it looked like there's grip, but I'm not really sure if, uh, if it was just dirty or whatnot. But yeah, I kind of almost about got screwed there on the start by the plant playing, playing micro games. But um, yeah, I'm excited. We got a great car. Um, factor cane shock stand racing engines um, got victory fuel keeping me uh, hydrated for the night and uh, you know I can't thank my guys enough see what we can do here in the next qualifier how's your comfort level right now compared to last year whenever you won the prelim night I'd say about the same I mean we got the same race car the only thing different is the rear tires so um, and we've had some you know I use going out west to go um, kind of test before Chili Bowl and I had some races on the on these tires, you know, at the beginning or th throughout the season, and uh, you know, I think we got a pretty good little baseline, and um, yeah, we'll see what we can do. Tanner Thorson gets a heat race win, guys. He spent uh, all, pretty much all of 2023 putting different drivers uh, behind the wheel of his midget, so that he could focus solely on working on it, figuring out the setups. I think specifically for uh, a good run at the Chili Bowl. Looked awfully good right there. Tanner, good interview. He's always uh, insightful in some form or fashion. As we're down to the last one, D features are coming up next. Now, after this heat race, as points are completely tabulated, top 40 will move into qualifiers. The remaining 33 drivers are divided up into two D features and two C features. D features will be 10 laps apiece and take the top two up into the back. So top two from D1 go into the back of C1. Top two from the back of D2 go into the back of C2. C mains, 12 laps, four cars advance. Top four from C1 to the back of B1. Top four from the uh, C2 into the back of B2. Rest of the B main fields are filled out by qualifiers. Top 16 in points after qualifiers will get locked straight into the A main event. Two B mains coming up. They're 15 laps in distance. Top four finishers in B1 started in the A main in position 17, 19, 21, and 23. B feature number two, also 15 laps in distance to determine starters 18, 20, 22, and 24. We've seen some guys move up tonight. We've had some really good runs and two good candidates here in eighth and ninth in this heat race between Brady Brake Brady Bacon and Landon Crawley. But of course, Ashton Torgerson, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, Caleb, fresh off of a driller. I believe it was Stockwing. He got the golden driller in at the Tulsa shootout a couple of weeks ago. Let's not forget, Ashton had a good prelim night going last year until everything that went down happened. He was outside of row number one, so he had scored a ton of points in that A feature. You can get a midget around this place. Johnny Kent, second position in the outside row. Josh Bothman going to be tough, too, off of the outside of row number three. That's a guy that's used to racing at speed and racing at high levels. So not going to be easy for your guys like Crawley and Bacon to come through this pack as there's a lot of good race car drivers and good equipment out there. J.D. Black is the one who is pacing them, and Ashton Torgerson going to be right next to him, side by side and wheel to wheel. Through three, deliberate pace being set by Black. Torgerson matches him. It's a good look at the start. Torgerson's got the bite off a of two, oh. and J.D. Black's going to look at the rest of the field going by him as he points the wrong way. It could have been a lot worse. Yeah, Landon Crawley had contact, too, and right rear, so. Right rear to right front is what it ended up being. Black. Looks okay. Shock's okay, spring's okay. Radius rods are okay, so your axle's not gonna be knocked back at all. Here's your Ibox Springs replay. JD gets her down in turn one and just overcooks her, and there's the contact. Wow, that's pretty incredible that that didn't break JD's front end. It's like right over the top of the tire itself without hitting yeah. any of the suspension. Big break here for Andrew Deal if we move him straight up. 
deal someone. He's been quiet the last couple of years down here at Chili Bowl, but we know can be right up there with the levels of Beeson and Bacon and all those guys. He grew up racing against them down here at Port City and a um, couple of phenomenal runs in his career here down at, at Chili Bowl. I put him inside road number one here in a heat race and he gets yeah. extra tough to beat, right? Ashton Torgerson's job just got a lot harder, that's for sure. Round two. Andrew Deal is a bit of a veteran here. If you're Ashton, you don't want to jump the start. Now, Deal you're knows not... all the tricks to bait him into it. Yeah, too. I say you're not going to bait Andrew Deal. Another pretty good looking start off the line, and Deal's going to yeah. beat him into the corner and up to the top of turn number two. Yeah, good job by him. And then the slide up to the cushion, not give Torgerson that run around the top like we saw Tanner Thorson get. So Deal quickly on the hammer. And now J.D. Black looks like he might have some kind of problem in the right yeah. rear. Yeah, he's pulling to the infield. Yeah. We'll stay green. Andrew Deal, your leader after two laps. Tight through one and two. Opens up the door for Torgerson. Wheelies across his front end. Good save by Ashton there to let out of it. Got back a battle. In, back in the field. That's Landon Crawley, who just picked his way from ninth to third. Nice run by Landon, who's putting some points in his pocket if he can hold it through. Johnny Kent trying to get him back, coming off the high group, the 55. Brady Bacon right now from eighth to fifth needs at least another spot. Yeah, he'd love to get one more here, closing in on Kent. Kent working up on that cushion. Bacon digging down on the bottom side track. Certainly starting to get a little bit wider. Kent might have found something coming back after crawling for third now. Kent getting aggressive, knowing that, hey, I can make some hay here. Goes back around the high side and gets Landon Crawley. So shuffle Crawley back now nine to four with two laps to go, and Bacon's going to sneak by. Boy, Landon Crawley went from having a really good run to now just maybe an okay run, and Bacon seizes the opportunity. Kent like a yo-yo, third to fourth to third, back to fourth. Checkered flag's going to come out. It's Andrew Deal holding off Ashton Torgerson. A late charge gets Brady Bacon third, Johnny Kent, and Landon Crawley. That might be a disappointing fifth place finish for Landon Crawley. It will be. Nine to five is not bad, but man, that's the veteran experience of Brady Bacon right there to not panic and uh, just wait and find a line and capitalize when the opportunity presents itself. Yeah, Bacon ends up being the high scorer in that heat race at 111 at eighth to three. Crawley still picks up on a nine to five, 92 points, so he's well into the qualifier and might even yeah. sneak into the invert. Yeah, he's right on the bubble for that invert. Could average. have been a lot better. As this one is done, this is going to be a fascinating one. Again, your typical Thursday average to make a qualifier is 74.2. Last year, it was 75. 93 points to make the inversion top 24 for the qualifier. Last year, it was spot on at 93. So we will see. Again, it's kind of Kyle Larson watch on that one as Larson with 72 points out of his heat race. It might worked. be on the front of a C-Main or might be just the, the tail end of a qualifier. Yeah, and we know with the loaded field we've got tonight, the back of a qualifier is not going to be an easy task he, at all. Guys, and, and B-Walk's tweeting.